Los Angeles Coliseum. And this game is brought to you by Plymouth Division of Chrysler Motors Corporation. Get in on your nearest Plymouth dealer's first annual Win You Over Save. By Sports Illustrated for the best in sports every week. And by Eastman Dillon, Union Securities and Company, members of the New York Stock Exchange. At this moment, bands are massed down to our left. The Coliseum floor is green. To our right, the yellow end zone with Chiefs spelled out in red letters and the American Football League emblem. To our left, in green letters, spell out Packers with the NFL familiar shield. And in a few moments, I'm sure that we will have our national anthem. And George Rodman, there's been a lot of talk, there's been a lot written about this AFL-NFL championship, but if I ask you what thoughts are fleeting through your mind at this moment as a former great pro quarterback yourself, what would you say? Well, I'm sort of sympathizing, I think, at this time with those 80 fellows who are down there in their locker rooms who have not come out on the, the field yet. It's indescribable, the feelings that a, not just a professional football player, but any athlete has before a great contest such as this. They know that millions of people will be watching them, will be listening to the radio account of this game, thousands of people here in the stands, and it's just indescribable, that nervous tension that builds up the game means so much to both of these teams. And frankly, it's not the money. Now, there's a difference of $7,500 between the winning and losing shares today. The winning team will receive $15,000. Each player on the losing team will receive $7,500. And many people think, well, this is sufficient to make the difference right there. Certainly, this does mean something to these people, but actually, it's much more than that. There's tremendous pride, as we mentioned before. It's not just two football teams. This is the entire National Football League against the entire American football league today, a game that people have been looking forward to for seven years, and don't think that those 80 fellows, 40 on each team, don't feel this right now in their locker rooms. They're all alone there, and the tension is just tremendous. Well, they're all alone there, out on the field now, the combined college bands of the University of Arizona and Grambling College, and they were complimented by the Anaheim High School Columnist Drill Team and what is called the Super Bowl Chorus, which right now is marching across the track from our right to center field. And in a moment, of course, we will have the opening ceremonies. As everything else concerning this Super Bowl, this AFL-NFL championship is, there are many people here, and we are concerning ourselves now with today's officials. There are six officials from each league. There are six who are designated as today's officials, six more who are the audience. And before we get caught up in all of the Super Bowl pregame activity, let us tell you today's officials. The referee, number 10, Norman Schachter of the National Football League. The umpire is George Young of the American Football League. The linesman is Bernie Ullman of the National Football League. The back judge is Jack Reeder of the American Football League. The bill judge is Mike Wisetsky of the National Football League. And the line judge is Al Sabato of the American Football League. And repeat, there are six more waiting in the wings should one of those not be able to perform his duties today. American now being played by the bands, and in a few moments we will have the introductions to both Green Bay, winners of the National Football League title, and the choices today by most people around this country to win the first Super Bowl, as well as the Kansas City Chiefs, who many say have the psychological edge to come out and win for the American Football League. Now on the field, the emblem of an American Eagle is formed by the combined bands of Arizona Grambling and the Anaheim High School. And now, let us listen to the Super Bowl chorus. America the Beautiful.
only for the Super Bowl chorus. At America, but 4,000 pigeons have been released here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Some of the game conditions for today's ball game between Green Bay and Kansas City. After a touchdown, the teams will kick one or pass for one extra point. The AFL two-point option is not in effect. Now, remember, the National Football League ball will be used when the National Football League team is on offense. The American Football League when the AFL team is on offense. And you are trying to win. We want to talk about that in a moment ourselves. And now there is a shield emblematic of the United States of America. With the red, the white, and blue. And throwing below us on the Coliseum floor here in Los Angeles. And what it does, can we have a moment, George? What is the real difference between the AFL and the NFL ball? Well, it is plain that the National Football League ball is slightly fatter and the American League ball constantly a bit harder to throw. Uh, I doubt this very much, really. I think uh, the quarterbacks may uh, have a psychological handicap here. They may feel that throwing a strange ball uh, would be a little different. The ball would be a little narrower, a little fatter. So they have compromised by using the American League ball when the American League is on offense, when Kansas City is on offense, using the National League ball when Green Bay is on offense. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before the Super Bowl, our national anthem. just a minute. And as we await the opening kickoff of the World Championship of Professional Football, let me ask you, last September, did you pick the Packers and Chiefs to finish first? Sports Illustrated picked them. In their pro football preview, they said, the Packers are those against whom all others are measured. They'll win it with style and pop. About Kansas City's chances, Sports Illustrated said, if the Super Bowl ever does come off, the first team to represent the AFL would very well be the Kansas City Chiefs. Guesses? Well, to be sure. But based on a thorough analysis of the men who play and coach football professionally, Sports Illustrated staffs of professionals brings you penetrating and provocative sports coverage every week. The NFL and AFL championships, the Super Bowl preview. And coming up, a report on the action about to unfold right here. Pictures and fast, close cuddle. The important details of all sports and leisure time activities, their excitement and color in professional hands every week in Sports Illustrated. The bands have now made their way up the field and down to our left. They are lining up for the introductions of the players and here they come. Kansas City will be introduced first. At center, number 66, Wayne Fraser of Auburn. At right guard, number 64 from Iowa, Kirk Murs. At left guard, Ed Buddy, number 71 of Michigan State. And remember, the offensive line outweighs that of Green Bay. Right tackle, number 73 from Auburn, Dave Hill. At left tackle, the big boy, 6'6", 292, Jim Tyrer, number 77 from Ohio State. At the school end, Chris Burford of Stanford, number 88. 
The All-American from Stanford and the tight end, Kurt Argonis, from Michigan State, will start number 84. So for the slight shoulder separation and the championship game of the will start. Mike Rock, Otis Taylor, Murray Dew, number 89. The big hand is for Mike Gurt, the running back, who was Heisman Trophy winner All-American at USC and played his games here. Curtis McClinton, number 32, is the fullback, the All-American from Kansas. And the quarterback is Len Dawson of Purdue, six feet tall, 190 pounds on his arm and thinking and ability by the hopes of the Kansas City Chiefs. And now the rest of the Chiefs team. The Chiefs to repeat are dressed in white with red doubles, and someone passed along a note to us that the Chiefs this year, of course, they only lost twice, but never lost while wearing these uniforms. The team that is heavily favored to win, the Green Bay Packers, have yet to be introduced. They will today be wearing their green jerseys, gold pants with the white numerals. And of course, they, as they say, have been to the well before. They have played in either the National Football League Championship game or playoff bowl in each of the last six years, and they have won four world championships in that time. Vince Lombardi, since taking over with the Packers in 1959, has done a tremendous job. The offensive lineup for the Green Bay Packers. Center Bill Curry of Georgia Tech, number 50. And right guard. And of course, Green Bay has got some great guards. Jerry Kramer, number 64 from Idaho, in his ninth year. And left guard, Craig Fuzzy Thurston from Valparaiso, number 63, in his ninth year. Right tackle from SMU, the veteran 10 year, Forrest Gray, 6'4, 250. At left tackle, Bob Skowalski of Indiana, number 76. The good end, number 84, Carol Dale of BPI. And the tight end, Utah's Mar Fleming, will wear number 81. The Viper back from Colorado, number 86, Boyd Dowell, caught 49 passes this year. At running back, Elijah Pitts of Philander Smith, number 22. Many people feel that Paul Horning will see action today. The fullback, Jim Taylor, of LSU, number 31. And, of course, the quarterback, the most valuable player in the National Football League this year from the University of Alabama, number 15, Bart Starr. And the rest of the Packers come on the field, and George Radovan, the Super Bowl about which we've been talking, is just now moments away. Just moments away, it's interesting to note the great weather we have here in Los Angeles, the temperature in the 70s, a nice day for a football game. We have a report on the weather in both Green Bay and Kansas City. It's clear in both cities, but it's 6 degrees in Green Bay and 26 degrees in Kansas City. And I'm certain there's not a player down there on that field who isn't happy to be here on a good dry field in Los Angeles with the temperature in the 70s today rather than playing on the frozen turf someplace back east or in the northern part of the country. This is really going to be a fine test. They will have no excuses because of the weather. Either team who loses today. Well, John Gillum and Jerry Mays, the co-captains of Kansas City, are on the field along with Willie Davis and the other offensive captain, Bob Skaronski, a tackle from Indiana. Green Bay has won the toss and will receive the football of his first AFL-NFL championship. And so the Packers, the methodical team, the team that dwells on fundamentals, the team that everybody says with the exception of those who support American football leaguers, of course, should win this championship, will receive the ball first and get the first crack to test the defense of Kansas City. The Packers breaking out to our right. To repeat for you, the Colosseum City here in Los Angeles, sunny skies, temperature in the 70s, and what a day. Donnie Anderson, number 44, and Herb Adderley, number 26, go back. Anderson, the bonus boy who came from Texas Tech, a rookie, and her family, the six-year veteran from Michigan State. And Fletcher Smith, number 17, will kick off for Kansas City. The Chiefs moving from left to right, the Packers from right to left. And Anderson and Adderley are stepping up to about the 4 or 5, anticipating a shorter kick from Fletcher Smith of Kansas City. The Super Bowl is underway, and it is a short kick from Smith. Adderley at the 6. Across the 10, running to his right. 
Across the 15, cuts back up to the center of the field and gets to the 25 yard line where he is going up there. It'll be first and 10 for Green Bay. E.J. Holland, the right side linebacker, number 55, Abel Stop, along with number 44, Darrell Wilson, and number 78, the left side linebacker, Bobby Bell. We'll set the offensive lineup for you of Green Bay as they come out of the huddle. It is Boyd Dollar who comes as a flanker to the left. Carol Dale is put to the right. Mar Fleming, the tight end, is on the right side. Elijah Pitts, Jim Taylor, the setbacks. Bart Starr calling signals on the first play of the game. Jim Taylor picks up two or three yards. Going over his own right side. Before E.J. Holland came across from his right side linebacker spot and knocked him down at the 29. A gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Jerry May is 75, Andy Rice 58, Buck Buchanan 86, Chuck Hurston 85, along the forward wall for Kansas City. Bobby Bell, Cheryl Hedrick, and E.J. Hunter with the linebackers will pick up the deep men in a moment. Dollar is flanked left. And off to Elijah Pitts. Pitts back to the line of scrimmage, running off his own left side and up near the 35-yard line, just shy of the first down. Johnny Robinson came up from the defensive secondary to make the stop. It is Freddie Williamson, Bobby Hunt, Johnny Robinson, and Willie Mitchell, who are the deep men for Kansas City. Third down and one. The Packers have picked up nine on two running plays, testing first the left side of Kansas City and then the right side. Darrell Dale goes wide to the right. Dowler, the flanker to the left. Mara Fleming, the tight end, has put about three yards to the right. Wrong side to the left. Star on third down one. Ball signals. Hands off to his fullback, Taylor. Taylor's got the first down before he's dragged down by William Mitchell. Number 22, the right cornerback as he hits to the 37. First down for the Packers. And it's interesting to note that the Green Bay Packers have started off the ball game as we thought they would with their rather conservative uh, running offense. Nothing fancy at all, just straight power plays. First going off tackle to the right, then a sweep to the left, then Taylor going off tackle again to the left. The straight power, the traditional conservative offense of the Green Bay Packers. Dollar has come out and Max McGee has gone in. Carol Dale to the right and Bart Starr is going to try his first pass. In the pocket, looking for his man that is under thrown and tended for Max McGee at the 47-yard line. Johnny Robinson was back there to the pad and had not the ball been under thrown, George Redmond. Robinson might have had an interception. He had 10 on the year. It's second and 10. Of course, a good passer will do that. He will always throw the ball, first of all, where it cannot be intercepted. Even if he can't complete it, he'll make certain to keep it away from that defensive man. And there you saw one of the reasons that Bart Starr only had three interceptions during the entire National Football League season. He will definitely not throw that ball any place where a defensive man has a chance at it. Well, but a half minutes to go. First quarter, no score. Green Bay received the kickoff. Now has the ball on the 37. On second and ten, Starr drops straight back. And is going to a long loss from the 37 back to the 26, 11 yards. And on the first straight drop back down the star, Buchanan, the four-year veteran from Grandling College, got through to make the tackle. Third down and long yardage. And we note now that the Kansas City Chiefs have put in an extra linebacker. They've taken out Andy Rice and put in a linebacker, so they will have... Three, a three-man rush this time on star and four linebackers. They invariably do this on an obvious passing situation. McGee to the left. Harold Dale to the right. Mark Fleming split as Elijah Pitts goes into the slot to the left. Third down and 21 yards. Star back. Going to be hit in the slot as he hits to the 21-yard line. And that is all. Kansas City was him on him. Bobby Bell hits him from the left side. And Green Bay will be forced to kick the ball away. Picked up one first down, but then we from the own 37 back to the 22. Tom Chandler coming in to do the punting, and Mike Garrett and Emmett Thomas go deep for Kansas City. Chandler will step back inside his own 10 yard line. Little or no wind here today, and so the wind is not a factor on the Chandler punt. Chandler just does get the kick away, but it is a boomer. That is Mike Garrett at the 28 yard line, jockeying. Gets past one man, cuts to the right side, across the 30, still on the speed and right out of bounds as he hits to the 37-yard line. And Mike Garrett brings the ball back to the 37, will stay in the game, and Kansas City for the first time today goes on offense. 
Ben Dawson will be at quarterback. Mike Garrett, your running back. Curtis McClendon, the fullback. Otis Taylor, your flanker. Fred Arbonis is the tight end. Chris Burford, the split end. Tower and Hill, your tackles. Buddy and Murs, your guards. And Fraser at center. No score. In this, the first quarter with about 10 minutes left. Kansas City sends Garrett in motion. Dawson rolls out to the left, looks for one man on the far side, and he has got it out of bounds. Chris Burford caught that ball out of bounds. Burford was split. Otis Taylor was in tight. Garrett went in motion. And so the Kansas City Chiefs, George Rodman, who have the, well, the reputation for gambling early, went to the pass on first down as contrast Green Bay, which ran first to the right and then to the left. And we have an example of Kansas City's moving pocket as Lenny Dawson did not drop straight back, but faded back to his left and then set up. As we pointed out before, he will not throw on the run, but he will set up with this moving pocket, either to the right or to the left. That time he went to the left. Again, the flanker back. Well, now he's splitting out to the right. Otis Taylor. Burford is flanked to the left. McClinton and Garrett are the setbacks. Dawson, a long count. Hands the ball to Garrett. Garrett at the line of scrimmage. And May has picked up a yard or two and is still on his feet and gets across the 40. A great individual effort. And that's Mike Garrett, four yards from the 37 to the 41. Von Kosteldick made the tackle. Looked as though Garrett had had it, but squeezed out. Turned the corner and picked up four yards. Willie Davis, Ron Kostelnik, Henry Jordan, and Lionel Aldridge along the forward wall for Green Bay. Dave Wilkinson, Ray Nitsky, and Leroy Cathy, your linebackers. Herb Adley, Willie Wood, Tom Brown, and Bob Jeter, the deep nut. Third down and six. As Burford again goes wide to the left, he has been set left as a flanker each time. High formation, but now Garrett. Steps over to the right, and Taylor is flanked to the right. Third and six, looking for Burford as Dawson. Has him first down across the 50 in Green Bay territory to the 47-yard line. The Chiefs have a first down in Green Bay territory. Bob Jeter, a Iowa a four-year veteran, hit Burford. He was the only man on that side, and he was double-teed, but Dawson got the ball to him. And that could be an extremely important first down for Kansas City because, of course, they've been hearing Green Bay has a tremendous defensive squad that they perhaps couldn't move the ball against them. The very first time they get the ball now, they do make a first down. This could build up their confidence tremendously in this ball game. High formation. Ball is handed to Garrett, and Garrett's going nowhere. The Green Bay Packers defensive line rose up and knocked him down. It'll be second down and ten. Henry Jordan of the University of Virginia, a ten-year veteran. That time, Otis Taylor was flanked to the right, and Burford was set in the slot to the right. We're second and ten, the ball on the 47-yard line of Green Bay. We've got ten and a half minutes to go. No score here in the first quarter of the Coliseum of Los Angeles. The first AFL-NFL championship under clear skies. And we note that the two passes Lenny Dawson has thrown have both been to the left. He seems to be avoiding so far cornerback Herb Adderley, who plays left cornerback for Green Bay and one of the best in the business. Too much time, I believe, will be the charge against Lenny Dawson. And will cost him five yards. And will make it second down and 15. And that takes the ball back into Kansas City territory at your own 48-yard line. Green Bay took the kickoff. Picked up one first down to the 37-yard line. And then were thrown back to their own 21. Chandler fun of the way to the 37 of Kansas City. Kansas City moved it to the 47 of Green Bay, where this five-yard penalty has set them back. Otis Taylor comes out wide right. Burford is set in the slot. Dawson calling the signals. Dawson rolling to the right. Dawson throwing has a man in the clear. He's got a great catch, but they say he's out of bounds. Chris Burford, for the second time, made a catch, but could not keep both feet in bounds. Dollar, we understand. Boyd Dollar, who started this game, is out with an injured shoulder. Max McGee, you'll recall, replaced him very early. And now it is third down and 15 for the Kansas City Chiefs. Burford has shown an ability to get loose, but each time Dawson, hugging those sidelines, has forced him out of bounds with the catch. And another thing of interest to note, all three of Lenny Dawson's passes so far have been to Chris Burford. One complete, the other two incomplete because he was right on the sideline. Burford, of course, is a seven-year veteran, and in a game like this, there's a tendency to go with your experienced people early. On third down and 15, Taylor wide to the right. 
No score in this, the first quarter. Dawson back to throw, looking for Taylor, and he overthrows Taylor as well as Herb Adley at the 25-yard line. And it'll be fourth down, and now Kansas City will send in Jerry Wilson, who has a 44.5 punting average, to do the kicking. Going back is Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson. No score, nine minutes to go. The Green Bay Packers in green with gold trousers, the Kansas City Chiefs in white with red numerals. Darrell Wilson stepping back to the 31-yard line, and Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson are within their 15, standing at about the 12. Wilson, with all the time in the world, drills one, driving Anderson back to the 5. Running loudly to his left, puts a blind block, is up to the 10, fast to come down the side, across the 15, and is pulled down from behind as he hits to the 20-yard line by number 52, one of the linebackers of Kansas City, Bud Abel. A good rookie from the University of Missouri. First and 10 for Green Bay. Ball just over the 20-yard line. Note that Chuck Hurston of the uh, Kansas City Chiefs was injured going down under that punt. Chuck, of course, the defensive end for the Chiefs, and he's taken off the field on the far side. No score, nine minutes and ten seconds to go. Bart Starr and the Green Bay offense back in there is still Elijah Pitts, who has the ball now and is running wide to the right. Freddie Williamson came up to hit him, but he bounced off Williams and Pitts went out to the 24. Gain of three. It'll be second down and seven. Green Bay with Bart Starr, Elijah Pitts still starting as a running halfback, Jim Taylor full, and Max McGee has replaced Boyd Teller, who has an injured shoulder, Carol Dale and Mar Fleming. Nine minutes left to go. First quarter, no score. Green Bay with the ball on second down. And a long seven. Star dropping straight back. Throws over the center. It's complete to Mar Fleming, and he's got the first down across the 30 up to the 34-yard line. Fleming, the five. Tight end from the University of Utah, who caught 31 passes this year, got that one and rolled out near the 35. First down for the Packers, their second of the ball game. Great catch by Fleming, who was juggling the ball when he was hit, and nevertheless, he had managed to uh, get it under his control. You know, the Green Bay receivers could be fighting for something today because in the comparison between the two clubs, all week long it's been pointed out that Kansas City perhaps has better receivers, and this isn't going to make the Green Bay receivers happy. Dollar, or rather... Dale is the flanker to the left as Starr goes straight back in trouble, runs out of the pocket, gets the ball away, and picks the pass as Elijah pitches across the 50, down to the 45, and to the 43. On a play in which Bart Starr had to scramble from a mass of tacklers led by Jerry Mays. He stepped out of the pocket and found Elijah Pitts at the 45, and he raced it down to the 43 of the Kansas City Chiefs, where Green Bay in the scoreless ball game has the ball first and 10. There's time out on the field with the score. Green Bay, nothing, and Kansas City, nothing. Along with George Rademan, this is Jim Simpson from the Coliseum in Los Angeles in the scoreless ball game, first quarter, seven minutes, 20 seconds to go. Aaron Brown, the rookie number one draft choice from Minnesota, has come in as a defensive right end as... Chuck Hurston is out injured. Four dollar of Green Bay is out. Quick pitch to Jim Taylor. Coming to the left. In trouble and will be dragged down for a loss. Back in Green Bay territory. E.J. Hollett, the right side linebacker, was... Well, he just refused to be taken out of the play. And Jerry Mays, the All-American Football League defensive left end, came over to help out. And the ball now is placed down on the 49 of Kansas City. A loss of about five at second and 15. The AFL NFL Championship. This is the Super Bowl. Being heard across these United States and, of course, around the world on Armed Forces Radio. Carol Dale wide to the right. The key to the left. Mark Starr dropping straight back. Looking. Has plenty of time. Throws to Carol Dale. He has got the ball at the 37 yard line. Not enough for the first down. 
Freddie Williamson, the left cornerback from Northwestern, made the stop there. And again, George Rodman, a low pass, and Carol Dale did well to dive for it and come up with it. A low pass, but those are the kind that can't be intercepted. They can't be deflected up into the air. They can't uh, uh, be up high enough for a defensive man to come in. And that actually, a passer will try to throw the ball on their low sometimes on a pattern such as that where the receiver is coming back toward the middle of the field or toward the passer. Third down three from the 37. Dale to the right, McGee to the left, Star dropping straight back, hit as he throws, has the ball, as McGee puts it up. Step right by a defensive back, and one of the linebackers who had to step off, and Max McGee, it was Jeremy Hedrick who had a hand on it, but McGee simply whipped his way out of his grasp, and it's a 37 yard touchdown punt. Great catch by McGee, who uh, you might say uh, had no business catching the ball. Actually, it wasn't uh, too well thrown. McGee made a great stab, though, uh, and the defensive man there, I'm sure, thought that McGee had no chance to get it. Don Chandler will do the extra point kicking. Ball is placed down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. There's Donovan on the field with the score now. Green Bay 7, Kansas City nothing. Don Chandler will kick it off. Six minutes, four seconds to go here in the first quarter. The Packers have scored first on the pass to McGee. He made a great catch and a fine run. Cohn and Garrett are deep, but as Mike Garrett will take it at the two. Garrett goes to his left, but back to his right. Looking for daylight. Steps around one man across the 20. Bags go down. Over on the 27-yard line as Mike Garrett has run out of bounds at the 24. And we'll wait to see what the flag says. One of the officials, and remember there are six officials here today, three from each league. And they're in consultation now at the 26-yard line. Racing in very quickly to see what is going on is Cheryl Hedrick. And it looks as though it's going to be clipping coming up against Kansas City, which of course will put the Chiefs deep in the hole. And that's what they're doing, they're stepping off yardage back inside the 15-yard line. And placing the ball down on the 12. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. A target all WGY's connected to a General Electric Broadcasting Company station. One, two, one. Jim Simpson with George Rodman, first down on the 13 yard line. Perfect goes to the left, Taylor is split to the right. Dawson calling signals. 7 0 Green Bay leads. Dawson rolls out. Going to pass from his end zone across the 10. Now has running room across the 15. Coming out to the 20 and dragged down on the 21 yard line. The scrambling of Len Dawson, apparent there, George Rodman, and Ray Nitschke came over and made the stop at the 21. Instead of being thrown near his end zone, he got out and across the 20. Packers put a lot of pressure on Dawson that time. He went back. As he will do frequently, fake the running play before going back to pass, fake the draw play. The Packers, however, didn't go for the fake, went back and put a lot of pressure on Dawson, but he showed his scrambling ability by getting loose there, gaining about seven, seven and a half yards on his run. By formation, Taylor split wide left with Burford set in the slot to the left. Dawson on a quick little pitch. To the side, and down he goes. Race down is Lionel Aldridge making the tackle, and getting up rather slowly is Mike Garrett, the man who caught the pass. Just a little quick to pitch to his backfield man, as Dawson, of course, is trying to pick up the yardage and may have gotten nearly enough for the first down. They're going to call for a measurement. 7 to nothing. the Green Bay Packers lead. We are here in the first quarter. About four and a half minutes left. And again, Dawson faked the running play, faked to one of his running backs before throwing that quick pitch out there to Garrett. Of course, the purpose of that, faking the running play, is to try to hold one of the linebackers in position so that he cannot get out into the flat and cover the pass receiver, in this case, Garrett. Measurements show that it was good for a first down. Kansas City has a first down on their own 23-yard line. And good for the first down by perhaps a quarter of an inch. Otis Taylor, wide right, Biff. Burford goes to the left. Our Dennis... The tight end is split about a yard or two to the left. 
Quick opener, and down goes Burford. Uh, the ball goes over his head, and defensive interference is being called on the far sideline as Burford was knocked off his feet by Bob Jeter and Tommy Brown before he even got the ball. I'm sure that the penalty is being called against Jeter. But in any event, again, a ball just a couple of yards, but takes it up to the 29-yard line, but of course it means it's a first down from there. And the ball thrown by Dawson was nowhere near the receiver, way over his head, out of bounds. But Jeter was up so fast on Burford, I would rather think that Dawson purposely threw it out there. He knew he had no chance for a completion, didn't want it to have it intersected, just threw it over Burford's head and was fortunate that Jeter came up and interfered on the play. There by this time is good wide right with Burford set in the slot to the right. Curtis McClendon, for the first time today, gets the call to carry the ball. It goes out across the 30-yard line and picks up perhaps four yards on the play. Stop is made by Lionel Aldridge and Willie Davis, the defensive ends, and George. This is what a lot of people have been waiting for, to see whether or not the Kansas City Chiefs can hold up under the pressure of an early score by Green Bay. Well, the Chiefs were hurt not only by that score, but then when they received the kickoff, they were penalized because they were holding on, returning the kickoff, or really put in the hole. But they've come out here, made a first down, now picked up three yards on the first uh, down here, so they showed they can operate under pressure. Garrett is the lone setback. Dawson rolls to his left, looks downfield. Albanis is there, and down to the 40-yard line of Green Bay for a first down. Leroy Caffey, the linebacker, forced to cover Ben Arbanis, made the tackle, but not until after Arbanis had the pass from Dawson in the first down. Ball is placed down now on the 49-yard line of Kansas City. Green Bay scored on a 37-yard pass play from Bart Starr to Max McGee when McGee and Hedrick, well, Hedrick, as George Rodman said, probably thought that McGee never had a chance for the ball. But McGee made a great catch at about the 23 and raced it in from there. Taylor, wide right, Burford to the left, McClinton and Garrett, the setbacks. Dawson on first down from his own 49. Hands to Mike Garrett. Is across the country, across the 45, and spins his way out of the 41 yard line. Near a first down, Tom Brown, number 40, makes the stop along with Leroy Caffey. And they will measure to see whether or not it is a first down. It is close to the first down. Coming to the side of the field is one of the officials, 7 to nothing, Green Bay. On that pass to McGee, and there's time out on the field right now with the score, Green Bay 7, Kansas City, nothing. Two minutes and 55 seconds to go. And this is the first quarter of the AFL-NFL Championship, the Super Bowl from the Coliseum of Los Angeles. Under sunny skies, little or no wind. And it is second down and inches to go for Kansas City. Burford goes out as a flanker to the left. I formation. Now Garrett steps over to the right. The other ends are in tight. Dawson on second down and inches is back to pass with lots of time. Now in trouble. Looking. Gets past one man. Has his own first down across the 40-yard line and is driven back across the 41. Dawson looking for a running room. Did get enough for the first down. Ray Nitschke, the middle linebacker, came up very quickly and threw him back across the 40. The ball will be spotted at the 39. First down for Kansas City. The Chiefs trailing 7-0 to Green Bay. Another example of Lenny Dawson not throwing the ball when nobody is open downfield. He tried to cross Green Bay up, had a second and one situation, faked the running play into the line, acted as if they were going for the first down, then stepped back to throw, saw that Burford was not open downfield, and you will not see Lenny Dawson or Bart Starr, for that matter, turn the ball loose unless the receiver is open. Taylor wide right, Burford set in the slot, and Mike Garrett with the ball, and down he goes, wrestled down by... Big number 89, the left side linebacker Dave Robinson of Penn State. And Mike actually lost a yard on the play back to the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and 11. There have been two injuries that we have noted so far. Boyd Dollar hurt his shoulder and went out early, and Max McGee replaced him. It was McGee that caught the touchdown pass. And Chuck Hurston went out for Kansas City, and Aaron Brown has replaced him as a defensive right end. Brown, the number one draft choice from the University of Minnesota. Now, Burford goes to the left side. Otis Taylor trots over here to the right on second down 11. Garrett goes in motion to the left. Dawson rolling out to the left, looking to throw. It's rid of the ball. Way over the head of Otis Taylor, who is being defended against by Willie Wood, number 24. 
from USC. Ball falling dead out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. And again, Dawson throwing extra long, preventing an interception. It is third and 11. I'm running out on this. In the first quarter, a little bit more than a minute to go. Seven to nothing, Green Bay leading. Willie Wood had position on Taylor, defending against uh, Taylor that time. The ball was thrown deep down the field. Dawson trying to hit Taylor deep, but Wood had position on him and wouldn't let Taylor get deep. And, of course, he doesn't have to get out of his way. He just maintained his position so that Taylor couldn't get deep to where the ball was going to come down. Perfect wide left. Reg Carolyn has now replaced Fred Arbonis, and he is split left also. Taylor split to the right. And Dawson is dropping straight back and looking and has his man, Carolyn, across the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Not enough for the first down, but Reg Carolyn made the catch, and Wayne Nitschke of Illinois, the middle linebacker, made the stop. They will bring up a fourth down. Gerald Wilson is coming in. Mike Mercer is coming in, and Mike Mercer is, of course, the field goal kicker. He is in on 32, or rather 33 or 33 conversion attempts, 20 of 26 field goals, and has scored 93 points. This will be a 40-yard field goal attempt as the Chiefs try to get on the board for the first time. Mike Mercer is ready. Dawson spots the ball. The kick is up. It is long, and it is off to the left side, and the Chiefs have failed to score. Green Bay takes over on the 20. Still leading 7-0 with a little bit more than a minute, about a minute and five seconds to go here in the first quarter. Mercer had enough distance on the ball. It had been said early in the season that Mercer could not kick long, but he's uh, kicked some long field goals this year for Kansas City. Kicked that one far enough. It went about five yards deep into the end zone, but was off to the left. Harold Dale goes out wide to the right. Bart Starr now dropping back. As the official is talking to them, we were glad to have in their pregame show, Bob Hope. And, of course, we'd like to remind you again of Bob Hope's Desert Golf Classic, which will be on NBC Radio February the 4th and 5th. The big reports. Chuck Hurston has now gone back in, so apparently Hurston, the two-year veteran from Auburn, was not seriously hurt. 6'6", 230. And George and I have pointed out before that Kansas City, the underdog in this ball game, has conceded the advantage in weight offensively and defensively, and has conceded the advantage in speed. But they are trailed under the Packers by the score of seven to nothing. And we have an unusual situation here where one of these ball clubs has called a timeout in the first quarter. Kansas City called one a few uh, moments ago. And uh, I'm not certain who called this one, but this is quite unusual because most ball clubs will try to save their timeouts until the end of the half that they're in. 34 seconds to go in this quarter. Carol Dale is wide to the right. And on first down, Jim Taylor is given the job of tracking over the right side of his own line, and he picks up two or three yards, perhaps. Andy Rice is at the bottom of the pile from Texas Southern, along with Buck Buchanan, left tackle and right tackle, respectively. Clock is running. They may or may not get another play away in this quarter. At halftime, George Rallerman will be talking to Lance Allworth, the fine flanker from the San Diego Chargers, and the good quarterback down there to the Dallas, who very nearly beat these Green Bay Packers in the NFL championship game. I'm running out, but out of the huddle comes Green Bay. Star on second down, and seven started back with the ball, but the gun sunk, and the first quarter is over. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Green Bay seven, and Kansas City nothing. Second down and seven from the 23-yard line of Green Bay. The Packers leading on the touchdown pass to Max McGee with a little bit more than six minutes to go in the first quarter. Carroll Dale goes out wide left, split to the right. He is Max McGee, the touchdown maker, with Elijah Pitts still in there along with Jim Taylor. Fox guard drops straight back and looks and overthrows McGee at the sidelines at the 29. Fred Williamson over to the defense at the 29. So that'll be third and seven. Well, this is the day that many have been waiting for. As a matter of fact, in the pregame valley who of this, the Super Bowl, many business magazines even checked with networks about the amount of promotion being done, not only by the networks, but by the ball clubs themselves and the National and the American Football Leagues. Such has been the build-up to this game. Carol Dale goes wide to the left, 
McGee again to the right. Star dropping back on third down seven. Flag is down. Across the middle. Juggle up in the air. No good. And Dennis for Carroll Dale at the 45-yard line. And riding him down was Willie Mitchell of Tennessee State, a third-year veteran. But a flag went down on the play. They're back talking to Bart Starr, but now they're signaling for a Kansas City man to jump in and talk with them. So obviously the penalty is going to be against the Packers. Cheryl Hedrick is talking it over with the referee. The referee today is of the National Football League, Norman Schachter. A legal procedure charged against the Packers that will be refused because it will make it fourth down in seven, and the Packers' Don Chandler is coming to kick it away. Emma Thomas and Mike Garrett are stepping back to their own 30-yard line in punt formation. Green Bay leading early in the second quarter, 7 to nothing to score. Under sunny skies in Los Angeles, Chandler standing at his own 10-yard line, gets the boot away from the 14. A low spiral. Emmett Thomas takes it at the 33. Starts backwards. Now comes back upfield across the 30 and is finally wrestled down at the 34-yard line by Steve Wright, the third-year veteran from the University of Alabama. And Kansas City will get its hands on the balls again, on the ball again, trailing by the score of 7-0. Packers cover quite well going down under these punts. It's quite impressive to see them come down and take their positions across the field, boxing in the receiver so that he has no place uh, to go. Kansas City tried to return that one the first time Kansas or the first time Green Bay punted. Kansas City tried to block it. This time they did not try to block the punt. They tried to get back and block for the man catching the punt. Otis Taylor flanked wide right. Burford split about five yards to the left. Len Dawson on first down from the 33. Rolling to the right. Being pursued. And now throws back across field to Mike Garrett at the 35. Gets away from two men. Otis feet. Across the 45. Near midfield. Down to the 49-yard line in the first down goes Mike Garrett with a twisting and turning run. He must have stepped away from five or six men. But the man who had the best shot at him was the linebacker, Dave Robinson. But Derek twisted out of his arms, and Willie Wood finally had to make the stop at the 49 of the Packers. And that made the USC partisans draw their breaths in, because Mike is a former great player there. Typical Garrett ran, and Garrett got up and just walked off the field, which does not mean he's injured. Just a little bush after that run. The coaches tell the players, anytime you're bush, come out of the ball game. We'll put somebody in for you, at least for one play. Taylor, flanked to the right. Burford, split to the left. Ball is handed off to Garrett again, and Garrett gets down to the 45-yard line. Check that. It is Burke Cohn has come in for Mike Garrett, and Cohn, after Garrett's fine run, tracks across his own left side and down to the 45. Ball is placed back down near the 46, so we'll call it a gain of only three, a long three at that. It'll be second down seven. Burke Cohn of Kansas was an All-American at Kansas, was injured, in spring practice, and for years, many have predicted that he would be a great star in the American Football League. At the beginning of this year, he started out as though he would be, but he became injured. Both Burford and Taylor are on the left side, with Taylor split left, and Burford set in the slot. Straight ahead goes McClendon on a track play down to the 40, down to the 39-yard line, and nearer first down. And we can't help but recall the National Football League Championship game in which Don Perkins of Dallas was working the track pretty well against these same Packers. Third down a little bit more than a yard, and now Green Bay sends in Bob Brown on defense, and out comes Ron Kostelnik. So Brown will step into a tackle spot, operating with Jordan, Aldrich, and Davis along the board wall. Third down and about a yard. Dawson has him out of the huddle. Hands off to Cohn. Cohn has got the first down down to the 37-yard line. Burke Cohn of the University of Kansas operating in the same backfield with Curtis McClendon, another former All-American at Kansas. And with Burke Cohn in for Mike Garrett for Kansas City, they have a lot of size in the running backs. Burke Cohn stands 6 feet 4, weighs 220. Curtis McClendon, the fullback, stands 6 feet 3 and weighs 227. So two big, rangy running backs in there at the present time for Kansas City. About 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. The first half, Green Bay leading 7-0. But Kansas City has the ball. Dawson back to pass with plenty of time. Loops one long for Taylor, who is clear. He's going to the seven-yard line and is quite down there. Otis Taylor was deep in back of his man and actually had to show up for the pass. 
It was Tom Brown covering him. First down and goal to go at the seven. And again, Lenny Dawson helped to free his receiver, as he does quite frequently by faking the running play before throwing the ball to Taylor. Taylor was wide open, and Lenny was careful, didn't lead him too much, threw the ball out there perfectly. But Lenny Dawson helped ever so much on that play, as he does quite frequently on his pass plays, by faking a running play first to his running backs, drawing in the Green Bay secondary, and then hitting his receiver downfield. And now Kansas City with a chance. Comes out on the eye formation to tie this ball game. They would like to do it. Own shifts to the right. Tony McClinton, the setbacks. Dawson calling signals on first down. Keeps to the ball. Rolls out to the right. He's got a man. Cole, touchdown. Curtis McClinton. And it is 7-6 Green Bay. And he not only had a man clear, he had two men clear down in the end zone. Chris Burford and McClinton were standing down there side by side as once again, as we described on the last play, Lenny Dawson made the good fake, faked the running play into the line and then stepped back, found two receivers side by side down in the end zone. Mike Mercer, who tried a 40-yard field goal and missed, but is 33 for 33 in the conversion department, comes in and tries to tie up this Super Bowl game, which has been super so far. Ball is placed down. The kick is in the air, and the kick is good. Tie ball game. It's time out on the field with the score. Green Bay 7, Kansas City 7. This is Jim Simpson, along with George Rademan from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. 7-7 seven, seven ball game this Super Bowl. 10 minutes, 41 seconds to go in the first half. Fletcher Smith will kick off. Donnie Anderson and Herb Adderley are deep. Both are dangerous. Smith really puts his foot into this one. And this is Anderson across the 15, coming straight up the middle, and is hit as he gets to the 25 and rolls to the 27-yard line. Bobby Pry of Baylor, a five-year veteran, made the tackle. Along with Gerald Wilson. Ball is placed down on the 27 of the Packers, who found themselves tied. And what prestige is in this ball game? The pride of the National Football League is carried on the shoulders of the Green Bay Packers and that of the younger American Football League with the Kansas City Chiefs. Leading the way, Carroll Dale goes wide to the left. McGee is split about five yards to the right. Elijah Pitts and Jim Taylor still your setbacks. Paul Horning has not been seen yet. This is Elijah Pitts, goes across his own left side and is dragged down. As he gets across the 30 and out near the 32-yard line, a pickup of about five, Buck Buchanan made the tackle there. It is Mays, Rice, Buchanan, and Hurston. For Kansas City along the forward wall, Bobby Bell, Cheryl Hedrick, D.J. Holland, the linebackers, Freddie Williamson, Bobby Hunt, Johnny Robinson, and Willie Mitchell, the deep man. Second down and five after that five-yard gain, and again, it is Carroll Dale to the left, and McGee split about five yards to the right. Fleming, the tight end, is on the left side. Strong side right, Jim Taylor rolling along the line of scrimmage and picks up a yard or two on individual effort and near the first down, but he was hit almost as he hit the line of scrimmage by Jerry Mays. And again, you'll notice Green Bay coming back to their basic power offenses. Any good football team will do when they've been hurt, when they've been scored on, they will come back to the things that they do best. And this is the best of the Green Bay offense, the straight power plays, the off-tackle power plays, the... The power plays around in. Nothing fancy at all. Third down and one. Green Bay scored first on a 37-yard pass play from Star to McGee. Kansas City came back moments ago on a seven-yard pass play from Dawson to McClendon. 7-7 seven, seven to score. Third down one. Star Gambling has his down. He will go all the way and score. On third down one, Bart Star caught the Kansas City secondary thinking of something else. There's a flag down up at midfield, and the Packers are walking slowly back upfield. And ignoring the flag, which will call this play back and will take the touchdown away from Green Bay, we can say nothing except that was a marvelous call by Bart Starr because, as I have been saying, as everybody here uh, has been thinking and realizes, Green Bay is a basic power ball club. As we mentioned, they go to their basic power attack. So on third and one, Bart Starr crossed this all up by faking the running play and hitting his receiver all alone downfield. Unfortunately for Bart, the pass to Mark Fleming has been called back because 
an infraction against Green Bay was detected on that play, a 15-yard penalty. Check that uh, Georgia was a five-yard penalty for a legal motion. It was a third right. down and nearly six yards. And I'm sure that the Kansas City secondary is talking to itself what a break they had to have the ball called back. So now on the important third down six, Star drops back to throw again, goes over the middle and has his man. It is Max McGee. And McGee has the first down out across the border to the 41. Johnny Robinson made the stop there. So the Packers, who have had that long touchdown play called back, came right back and picked up the important first down of their own 42. Harold Dale has come back in, and Max McGee has gone out. It was Dale who made the sprint for what he thought was a touchdown, only to have it called back. Dale goes out wide to the left, and Bob Long is now in as Kansas City is going to call a timeout. After what has happened, George Radham and I would assume that Kansas City's defense and Cheryl Hendrick even now is walking to the far sidelines along with Bobby Ply, and they're going to talk things over with Hank Strand. But while they do, we say there's timeout on the field with the score, Green Bay 7 and Kansas City 7. Ball is on the 42-yard line, first and 10 for the Packers in a 7-7 ball game. We're midway through the second quarter. Star goes back to throw, looks downfield. His receiver comes back up and cannot hold on to it. Covered very closely by Woody Mitchell. It was Carol Dale for whom the ball was intended. But Woody Mitchell of Tennessee State was right there. Star, as he has done several times, kept the ball low and kept the possibility or probability of an interception to nearly nil. As George Rodman pointed out, Star's only had three passes and intercepted all year long. 7-7, seven seven, and I want to tell you, Los Angeles, if nothing else, turn on one of the greatest days for football. In mid-January, you can see perfect playing conditions, perhaps a little warm for the players, but for the spectators, just great. Dale is to the left, and Bob Long is to the right. Star going straight back. Now throws down. He has Elijah Pitts covered by a linebacker, E.J. Holland, but Star's pass was off the mark. And I think a screen pass was called that time by Bart Starr. I think Green Bay was trying to throw a screen pass out here to the right. Kansas City diagnosed the play very well, and he had nobody to whom to throw the ball, so he looked for one of these decoys who was going downfield and perhaps just threw it away purposely. But I believe the play called was a screen pass to the right, and he saw that he could not complete it because Kansas City had diagnosed the play. Third down 10 on the Packers' own 42-yard line. They send Dale to the left, and Bob Long comes to the right. 7-7 to seven the score here in the second quarter. Dale almost jumped offside, goes back. Star drops back the throw, throws across, has his man Dale in the clear at the 43-yard line, and that should be enough for the first down. Knocked down there by Bobby Hunt and Johnny Robinson. But Carol Dale made the catch, and it's a first down on the Packers in this 7-7 ball game come roaring right back. This is the Super Bowl, and of course a lot of people are saying, which is the better league? But I'm sure that you'll agree it comes down to which is the better team on the field today. Long is split wide to the right. Ball is handed to Jim Taylor, running out early to his left, and is knocked down as he turns the corner by Willie Mitchell, who simply dove at his feet. Mitchell is 6'1", 185. Jim Taylor is 6 feet tall, 215. But the way and the power with which Jim Taylor runs, both legendary. And Mark Starr has been putting a lot of pressure on Willie Mitchell, the defensive right cornerback of Kansas City. He's thrown quite a few passes out there to receivers who have gone down about five or eight yards and turned in toward the middle of the field. Now he sends Taylor on a running play around that end. So they're putting a lot of pressure on Willie Mitchell, the right cornerback of Kansas City. Boyd Dollar, Dollar, we understand, is out for the game. And this is third down six. Pitts picks up a couple of yards. Make it second down six. It'll be third down at about four now. We'll repeat, Boyd Dollar is out for the game. Apparently he suffered quite an injury and will be out for the ball game. And the good flanker back who made 29 catches this year will not see any further action. Well, there's time out on the field with the score. Green Bay seven and Kansas City seven. Along with George Rodman, this is Jim Simpson back at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. It is third down and five from the 38-yard line of Kansas City. Green Bay in possession. 
with Carol Dale to the right side and Bob Long split left. Star calling signals. Drop straight back on third down. Looks across the center, and a great catch by Marv Fleming. Inside the 30-yard line, and that'll be enough for the first down. Fleming was smothered by Cheryl Hedrick and Johnny Robinson, but jumped up between them and made the catch. And the Packers, George Rodman, are on the move again. And the Packer receivers thus far in this ballgame have shown great ability in catching balls that weren't necessarily thrown right in the pocket, right uh, where they should be. But they've uh, been reaching behind and in front of them, juggling the balls, but continuously coming up with the balls on all the difficult catches. Max McGee has come back in, nailed to the right, and off, and straight ahead goes Jim Taylor, but Jerry Mays does not allow him to get more than a yard or two as he gets down near the 25-yard line. Mays, two-time All-League in the American Football League, played the ball at SMU, six years in the league, 6'4", 252. Kansas City slow in getting up, 77 to score. I'm running out here in the first half. Five minutes and 41 seconds to go in this half. Dale is to the right. And McGee to the left. Both split. Second down. Star hands off to Elijah Pitts, who gets another yard or two, and that's all. Buck Buchanan, the right tackle. And George, perhaps the defense of Kansas City has surprised a lot of people thus far. Well, I think particularly their defense against the Green Bay running attack. They have looked very good against Green Bay's running. But Green Bay has been able to come back in these third down situations and pick up the first down by throwing the football. Of course, Bart Starr is famous for that. He's regarded as just about the best third down thrower in football. And as we mentioned before, they've been picking a lot on Willie Mitchell, a defensive right cornerback of Kansas City. So let's see if they do it again here. And this is another third down situation, as you said. McGee is to the left, Dallas to the right. Star throws to Pitts, and Pitts goes out of bounds. He made the catch for the first down inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. And this happened before when the ball was overthrown. E.J. Holland, the linebacker, had the assignment of covering Elijah Pitts. We'll find the outside linebackers of Kansas City, Holland and Bell, especially Bell, very fast. But the fact remains that the Packers have marched right back downfield. They had a touchdown call back, but on third and one, in their own territory, Mark Starr, a man until about two weeks ago, everyone said would not gamble, gambled upon Carol Dale, and he went all the way to score, but it was called back a legal procedure. Dale is Thomas Smith to the right. From the 14, Jim Taylor starts around the left side. Steps back inside the 10-5. Score! Bob From 14 yards out, and Taylor was hit. By Hurston at the line of scrimmage, but simply broke the tackle. And a great example of this Green Bay power offense is four green jerseys went around the left end that time, one of them belonging to Jim Taylor, who had the football, but three blockers right there with him, three blockers right in front of him. And any time you can turn the corner, get around the end with three blockers in front of you, you're going to go a long way. And, of course, Jim Taylor doesn't need any instructions on how to get into the goal line under situations such as that. Don Chandler in, and the ball is held by Starr. The kick is good, and Green Bay goes out in front. Boxer 73 yards and 14 plays. A reminder, as we've got about four and a half minutes to go, and this is the first half, that our halftime guests will be Lance Allworth, the fine flanker of the San Diego Chargers, many times in all-league selection, as well as Don Meredith, who took Dallas to the Eastern Division title in the National Football League, and within a whisker, George Raderman, of having won the National Football League Championship. That was one of the great games. Don Meredith and his Cowboys certainly looked great against Green Bay two weeks ago. A reminder also that NBC Radio, here today for the Super Bowl, the AFL-NFL Championship, will journey down the coast a little bit and inland to Palm Desert, California, to the Bob Hope Desert Classic on NBC Radio February the 4th and 5th. Chandler will kick off 14 to 7 to score, four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Green Bay scored first on a 37 yard touchdown pass to McGee from Starr in the second quarter. Lenny Dawson took his team down the field, much of it on the running of Mike Garrett. Finally hit Curtis McClinton for a score from seven yards out to top 7 7. 
And now on Jim Taylor's run, 14-yard run that kept the 73-yard drive, the Packers have gone right back in front. Chandler is ready to kick off. It is Cone and Garrett, who are deep. Garrett at the 10, across the 15. Balancing off his own men, using his hands to try to set up his blocks, and is finally knocked down as he hits out to the 26-yard line. Dave Hapecock of Memphis State, a rookie defensive back, made the tackle there. High formation shifting now with Taylor and Urbana split right. Burford split to the left, and now Garrett is in the... Well, here comes Dawson rolling out to the left, and he is in trouble. Can't get the ball away, knocked down inside the 15-yard line. Back there was Henry Jordan leading the way, but also the defensive right-hand line on Aldridge, the right side of the Green Bay line, simply poured through. Bastel had got there before it was all over. And also on the play from the 26 back to the 18-yard line. Second down and about 18 to go. 14 to 7, the Packers have led and are leading. We're tied and are leading again. Packers heavily favored have not made substitutions other than the fact that because of the injury to board dialer, they have been running in many different receivers. Eye formation, Taylor goes wide to the right. This time, again, they shift with McClinton and McGarrett. Um, Garrett coming out of the eye. Burford is to the left. Dropping straight back is Dawson. That's the ball go. Has his receiver to the 30-yard line. Still on his feet, and I believe Albanis has been hit on the shoulder. It was Fred who caught the ball at the 30, but as he was hit and hit hard by Nitsky, you can almost see him buckle, and he is now walking off the field. He has had an injured shoulder. He had his shoulder separated in the American Football League Championship game up in Buffalo two weeks ago was uh, somewhat of a doubtful starter for this game, and apparently the shoulder has not healed up fully because he undoubtedly re-injured the same shoulder on that play. That's a terrible feeling, too, to be injured in the middle of the play, not to be knocked down, to know that you have re-separated your shoulder and somebody is going to have to come hit you again. A pickup of 12 at his third down and six with the ball on the 35 of Kansas City, 14-7 to Green Bay leading. Closing minutes of the first half. Dawson drops back on third down and has his man Taylor. Taylor's got the first down across the 40, out to the 42-yard line. And Otis Taylor, who is a fine second-year flanker, 6-2-2-11 from Prairie View, is showing many people what a good flanker he really is. He's coming to his home this year. First down at the 41. Otis has all the requisites of a uh, great flanker back in that he has good news, but tremendous speed, catches the ball well, and catches it in a crowd. That is, uh, he doesn't hesitate to go up for the ball when there are a couple of defenders around him, and on top of that, likes to block, likes to come back on these end runs and help in the blocking. Two minutes and 20 seconds to go. Dawson fakes the handoff. Back, looking, has Taylor again. Taylor on his feet and down to the 30-yard line. But a flag is down, and let's see what it is. It could be charged against Green Bay anyway, and so I'm sure they will take the play. Defensive interference, and so the ball and Taylor has again moved Kansas City downfield. Make that Chris Burford. I beg your pardon. Number 88, not number 89. Tom Brown made the tackle. Then George was actually held up at the 40 yard line, but made the catch at the 35 and got down to the 32. Well, he's another good competitor, as we said about Taylor a moment ago. Burford is also the kind of fellow that can catch the ball in the crowd. He's not afraid to go up for it with a lot of defenders all around him. Taylor wide right, Burford wide to the left on first down from a 32. Garrett has the handoff and is down to about the 30. And look out, Mike. They're only 5-9. Nitsky led the charge of green-shirted Packers that swarmed all over him after a gain of perhaps two yards. Now, time becomes very important. A two-minute signal is being given on the field. Two minutes and a half, and Kansas City, trying to get on the board one more time, has the ball at the 30. 14-7, the Packers lead in this. The American Football League National Football League Championship. The Super Bowl. And at this moment, many of the bands that will be performing here at halftime are walking down the track that surrounds the Los Angeles Coliseum football field. 
That will be entertaining at halftime. And I'll remind you again that Lance Allworth and Don Mayer will be with George Rodman here in the booth. Kansas City now on the huddle, sending Taylor to the right. They've got the ball on the 31-yard line. They're trailing 14-7 in the final two minutes. Horford to the left. Dawson calling signals. McClendon and Garrett in the backfield. And fumble and quickly picked up. Curtis McClendon picked up his own fumble as Henry Jordan hit him. But actually, McClendon fumbled before he got hit. A loss on the play of a, perhaps a yard. Second down and 11. And I believe that is the first fumble in the ball game, uh, is it not? Which is somewhat unusual for a ball game with uh, all of this importance attached to it, all of the tension that the ball players are bound to suffer. It's a bit surprising there have been not been more fumbles thus far. A minute and 35. Dawson drops back. A little flip pass to Mike Garrett. He's stepping around at the 20. Gets through backwards and inside the 25-yard line now, dear. Down to the 23. And near the first down, and time becomes of the essence. And checking, Kansas City has a couple of timeouts left. And therefore, can stop the clock if they wish. Mike Mercer is coming in. And on fourth down and the yard, they're going to stop the clock and go for the three. Rather than try to go against that tough Green Bay defense and perhaps fail to get any points at all. And Lenny Dawson promptly walked over to the referee and called for a timeout. Uh, I don't know whether Lenny's going to go over and discuss this with Hank uh, Spram, his head coach, to decide whether they should go for the field goal. Perhaps Lenny has some other uh, ideas here. Now it appears that Lenny is staying out in the middle of the field. I thought for a moment, perhaps, that uh, he would go over and uh, try to argue the point with Spram and say they should go for the, the first down, but apparently not because Mercer is staying in the ballgame, so undoubtedly they will try for the field goal here. We have 55 seconds to go on this, the first half. Green Bay out in front, and of course the Packers have had a touchdown called back, but Mike Mercer attempted a 40-yard field goal attempt a little while ago, which was far enough, but just slightly off to the left. So each team has had scoring opportunities other than what's shown on the scoreboard that is 14 to 7. A short-sleeved crowd here in Los Angeles, California. And I hope that wherever you are, the weather is good. And if not, I hope you're enjoying this broadcast. For those of you in your cars, of course, remember, the game is important, but so is your driving. Keep your mind on what you're doing. The ball will be spotted by Dawson at the 31-yard line. Mike Mercer's nine yards closer than what he was before. Little or no angle. Ball is snapped. Hooked down. Mercer kicks. And this one is good. field goal. Kansas City crossed to within four points. Green Bay is out in front now by the score of 14 to 10. And George Rademan, if they should judge which is the better team or as many try to do, which is the better league, I doubt that they could do it on the basis of this first half performance. It's been a close ball game. I think Kansas City showed uh, signs of some nervousness in the early stages of the ball game, a bit more perhaps than Green Bay, who seemed uh, quite calm throughout. Possibly this will help uh, Kansas City in the second half now that they have overcome their nervousness. But certainly it has been an even ball game. Kansas City has shown a lot of offense here today. Uh, of course, they're known for their diversified attack. Green Bay has stuck to the, uh, the bread and butter type of offensive game for which they're known. I think it's a question whether Kansas City can score enough on Green Bay to... Uh, uh, to match uh, the points that Green Bay is uh, going to put on the scoreboard. Having the stronger defensive team, I think, on Green Bay, it, perhaps Kansas City would have the stronger offensive team so far. Fletcher Smith will kick off to Donnie Anderson and Herb Adderley, and this is a short kick, Higgins at the 22, picked up now by Adderley, and Adderley gets out to near the 25-yard line. They're knocked down there, with about 50 seconds to go in the first half. Now, of course, 50 seconds to the likes of any good professional football team is plenty of time. Smokey Stover made the stop of Adderley at halftime. A reminder again, Lance Allworth of the San Diego Chargers, Don Meredith of the Dallas Cowboys. We'll be discussing this football game, and I'm sure, George, that 
Lance will be saying a lot of good things about the American Football League, and Don Meredith will be saying a lot of good things about the National Football League. As you mentioned before, I don't think we've resolved much in this first half so far. I'm sure we haven't. Tits and Taylor still the setbacks. Paul Horning has not made an appearance in this ball game. This is Elijah Pitts coming to the right side, and he gets a good block and comes out near the 30-yard line. Bill Curry leading the way. Bobby Bell, the left side linebacker, came up to make the stop, and Chuck Buchanan, the left, or the, rather the right tackle, also over to help out. The ball is across the 30, placed down on the 33, the second down on three. Clock continues to run, showing nine seconds to go, and this is the first half. And the Packers are not showing any tendency to hustle out of that huddle and get up to the line of scrimmage. The Chiefs have already started to walk off the field, and there is the goal. That's the end of the first half on the score. Green Bay 14, Kansas City 10. <laughs> Halftime here at the Los Angeles Coliseum in this 14 to 10 ball game. And the Green Bay Packers out in front of the bands come on the field. In a few moments, we'll have our first guest. And now let us recap what happened in the first quarter with six minutes and four seconds to go. A 37-yard pass play from Bart Starr to Max McGee with McGee making a fine catch. Ripping out of the grasp of Cheryl Hedrick and going all the way to score. In the second quarter, with 10 minutes and 41 seconds to go, with Otis Taylor setting things up with a fine reception and Mike Garrett's good running, taking him down to the seven. Curtis McClendon found himself loose in the right corner of the end zone, and down there, Lenny Dawson hit him for the seven-yard touchdown pass to make it 7-7. Seven, seven. And then Bart Starr, after a pass to Carol Dale, was called back on third down and short yardage. Carried his team on a 73-yard march, capped by a 14-yard run by Jim Taylor with four minutes and 35 seconds to go to make it 14-7. And then in the closing moments, Chris Burford also made a great catch and pulled the Chiefs to within field goal range of the Green Bay Packers and Mike Mercer, unsuccessful in his first attempt, kicked the 31-yarder. That's how it ended, 14 to 10. Now for halftime, let's go to George Radovan. Thank you, Jim. And seated on my right is one of the great quarterbacks in professional football these days, Don Meredith of the Dallas Cowboys, who certainly had his greatest year this year, didn't you, Don? Well, I think so, George. By far, it was uh, the best year of the Dallas Cowboys. And, uh, it's quite often as a reflection of the quarterback's uh, ability or his success or at least whatever acclaim he might receive is what his team does. We had a very good team effort in Dallas this year, and I'm very happy to be a part of it. Don, you came oh so close to uh, tying up that ball game against Green Bay two weeks ago down in Dallas. I read a statement by your coach, uh, Tom Landry, that had you been able to score, get into the end zone, and tie that ball game up, you had the momentum going for you, and you very possibly would have had an advantage going into an overtime. How do you feel about that? Well, it's very easy for us to say this. Uh, you can't imagine how I feel watching this ball game today because we felt like we had an excellent opportunity to, to beat Green Bay, and, and we didn't do it. We respect Green Bay, and we think they're a very fine football team. Uh, in our game in Dallas, we did have some momentum. Our offense, I don't think, ever looked as good as it did against Green Bay. We executed probably as well as we possibly can, and uh, we felt that we, if we could have got them into overtime, that we could have won. However, I must say this, I think it could have been decided on the, the flip of the coin, in other words, which ball club would receive. And I think this is the way a, a sudden death would, would be decided. And if, I think if we could have gotten the ball, I'm pretty sure we could have scored. That's right. It was a great offensive display, so probably whoever got the ball first in the overtime would have had a tremendous advantage in that ball game. Don, uh, I have heard so much. Of course, I've been broadcasting American Football League games and haven't had much opportunity in recent years to watch the NFL games, but I've heard so much about the fine offensive blocking of the Green Bay line, and yet in the early stages of this game, Kansas City was getting through to Bart Starr a few times. Does that happen frequently in the NFL, or did that surprise you a bit? I was surprised to see that, too. I, I am more or less like you on, on, on the other side of the fence. Uh, and reading statistics, I understand that Kansas City's strong point actually hasn't been trapping the passer this year. I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe they've trapped him like 29 times, whereas... Uh, it isn't too much, really. Well, not really, because Green Bay's front four, and they very seldom blitz. Uh, I think they rank third in the National Football League with something like 49 traps, and this is a, a real plus for a team to have. So I was surprised to see this. Uh, I'm very impressed with Kansas City's uh, entire ball club, both offensively 
end defensively. Uh, uh, I've been trying to figure out their their defense from a spectator standpoint today, and, and they use what we call an, uh, an overship to the weak or to the strong side. We call it a ram and a frisco. Are you talking about the defensive line? I'm talking about the defensive line, the L line. It's an odd man line, basically an odd man line. And uh, Green Bay has, has been very adroit at, at having this all year. And I was a little surprised to see that uh, the success that they did have in the early part of the ball game. Looking for a moment at the Kansas City offense, uh, I think Lonnie Dawson has done a fine job in his play action uh, passes in the first half. The touchdown they scored, I think he had Green Bay completely baffled because, uh, as you know, you never want to have two receivers standing together, but he actually had the Clinton and Burford standing together down the end zone, could have thrown the ball uh, to either one. Uh, is he about the best you've seen as far as uh, faking before going back to pass? Well, I think Lay's done a very good job today. I've been very impressed with his, uh, his play call. Actually, I thought he's, uh, I think he has actually uh, more or less varied his offense enough that uh, he's kept Green Bay off. When I look at Kansas City's offense, it, it does remind me somewhat of ours because we do shift around like this in the different formations, and I can almost hear Nitsky calling out the different formations, but only in our terminology when these guys do shift. And I think it does create a burden on them, and uh, I think Lenny has done a very fine job with his. Uh, his play calling, his ball handling has been excellent, and he's been on target most all day. Thank you, Don Meredith. And Lance Howard has just walked into our booth, and we'll be back with Lance and Don in just a minute. You're listening to the NBC Radio's coverage of the first AFL-NFL championship game. This is George Radman with Jim Simpson at the Super Bowl in Los Angeles Coliseum. We're at halftime. The score is the Green Bay Packers 14, the Kansas City Chiefs 10. Our halftime guests are Lance Allworth, the fine flanker back of the San Diego Chargers, and Don Meredith, the great quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Lance, let me ask you a question here. A lot has been said about uh, teams having an advantage going into a game mentally. Who do you think have the psychological advantage going into this game? Uh, undoubtedly, Green Bay was the favorite. They know that they're good. Kansas City perhaps didn't know quite what to expect, but they had been talked down for a number of years. Who do you think had the psychological advantage going in? Well, actually, when you, when you sit down thinking, there are really two sides to say because Green Bay, when, uh, when they went into the ball game, Jim, was they played in a lot of big ball games, and uh, they're the big team, so they can go in. And they're not too nervous, but I'll tell you, just sitting in the stands up here, uh, I was really nervous and because uh, I was worried about how they were going to do. I felt like that Kansas City had a, was a great football team, but you never know. Kansas City, uh, I feel like that uh, for the first quarter, that they really didn't know what to expect. They were real high when, of course, when they came to the ball game because we're trying to prove something. And, uh, I think they're doing a fine job, and uh, it's going to be a heck of a ball game. I think it's amazing that uh, there was only one fumble in the first half, considering the tightness that uh, must grip some of these ball players before a ball game such as this. Right, and I'll tell you, that was squished by a real good play because uh, he was hit before he got the ball, actually, and he didn't get the ball tucked away. Now, Meredith, let me ask you, does your mental attitude changed much from game to game. That is, can you feel a lot more pressure? For instance, two weeks ago when you went into the championship game against Green Bay, could you feel mentally a lot more pressure before that game than before a regular season game? I think the most pressure we had uh, at Dallas was our Thanksgiving Day game against Cleveland. We had to win this ball game in Dallas uh, to stay alive in the Eastern Division. And being in Dallas for seven years, we've never won. So our first objective was to win the East. And there was a, it was a big build-up game, and there was a, a tremendous sell out there in Dallas, and Dallas has really caught on fire. And I think there's a lot of pressure, a lot of enthusiasm, which creates pressure, more so in the Thanksgiving Day game than in the championship game, because we played Green Bay before, and, and we felt like that uh, we had the tight ball club that could be very effective against them. And we were all ready to play if we played in the championship game. Tom, let me ask you, Green Bay has had a reputation for years, and you've played against them for quite a few years now, but they've had a reputation having a great defensive ball club. What's the biggest problem that you have as a quarterback calling the plays on offense against Green Bay? What are their strong points? What are their weak points, if any? Well, they have very few weak points, but I think our biggest problem is this, that Green Bay will not change. They're going to do basically the same thing week in and week out. And it's more or less saying, all right, now, this is where we're going to be against this formation. Uh, if you can beat us, come on, because we're going to be right here. And they're well-coordinated. They, they execute almost without flaw. The second half was 
about to begin. This is Jim Simpson with George Waterman. And George, one half of football does not a football game make. But the statistics, despite the Packers' 14-10 lead, are somewhat surprising. A bit surprising in that the Chiefs show a slight edge in most of the different categories of the statistics. In first downs, the Kansas City Chiefs have 11, the Green Bay Packers 9. Total yards gained. The Chiefs, again, are a bit ahead of the Packers. 181 yards for the Chiefs, 164 for the Packers. Breaking that down into rushing and passing. The Packers have a bit of a, an uh, edge in the rushing yardage, 51 to 37. However, the Kansas City Chiefs are ahead in passing yardage, 144 yards for the Chiefs, 113 for the Packers. So the statistics aren't too far apart, but the Chiefs do have perhaps a slight edge in the number of passes thrown and completed. The Packers' Bart Starr has completed 8 out of 13 passes. Lenny Dawson for the Kansas City Chiefs has completed 11 out of 15. So both quarterbacks, both teams have shown an ability to complete passes against the other. And this could well uh, be the tale of the second half here. Who is going to score the most points because it is not a defensive battle? Don Chandler kicks off. Gene Wilson comes up, watches it bounce at the 12, but a flag has gone down and a whistle has sounded. Again, back up field. And they will kick it again. The ball did not go out of bounds. The Packers are coming back upfield. 14 to 10 to score. The Packers lead one half left of this Super Bowl. Don Chandler will tee the ball up again at the 40-yard line. Now, George, it comes under the question of your guess is as good as mine. As to what happened on the last play, a very odd play. Green Bay kicked off. A lot of the Kansas City people didn't move, just stood there pointing at something, and I don't know what they were pointing at. This was a very high and very short kick. Burt Cohn comes up to the 13. Straight up field across the 20, now going to his right side, and is knocked down very quickly. As he hits to the right side by number 27, Red Mack, a flanker back, former Notre Dame All-American. Now they change the footballs again, as we have told you before. The American Football League using its own football while on offense. And the same for the Packers, its football while on defense. They are slightly different. The Packers have a slightly fatter ball, as George said. The Spurford comes out wide left. Otis Taylor goes to the right in an eye formation. Now shifting out of it, Garrett and McClinton are the setbacks. Packers have a lot of men bunched along the forward wall. Dawson rolling to his right. Now has running room across the 30, across the 35, and steps out of bounds as he hits to the 43-yard line. The Packer defense collapsed downfield, and George only Otis Taylor was downfield. And there were four Packer defensive men back there. And they were all turned around running full speed with Otis Taylor. Of course, they realize he is a long threat. He has great speed. But as you say, the defensive secondary of the Packers, almost all of them were turned around running back downfield with Otis Taylor. So when Lenny Dawson started to run there, they didn't even know it for, uh, for a while until he had gained some five or ten yards. First and ten on the 44 of Kansas City. They trail 14 to 10. Opening moments of the second half of the Super Bowl. Taylor is to the left. Burford flanked to the left. Dawson calling signals. Again, a six-man line. And McKinnon goes straight ahead and gets from his own 43 down to about the 48-yard line. A pick up the five before Ron Castellan, the left tackle from Cincinnati, number 77, makes the tackle. It will be second and five. A reminder, there were several injuries early in the game. Boyd Dollar, the flanker back, was injured in the first quarter for Green Bay and left, and we understand he's out for the game. Chuck Hurston, defensive right end, while Kansas City was injured, but he has come back. Taylor goes wide to the right. Now Arbanis is back in. He re-injured his shoulder, but is back in. Garrett is set in the slot to the right, but it is straight ahead. That is Garrett straight ahead. It was McClendon in the slot back. I'm sorry. And Ryan Larkins made the tackle just a couple of yards out to midfield, and they are still about four yards from first down territory. 
got a kick out of our Bama's remark after he was injured in the championship game up in Buffalo two weeks ago. He had a separated shoulder, and when I asked whether he would play in the Super Bowl, he said to show his determination, he said, I'll play even if Lamar Hunt, who is the owner of Kansas City, even if Lamar Hunt has to buy me a new shoulder. <laughs> I don't know how much shoulders cost these days. Dabble to the right, Burford to the left. Big play for Kansas City and Green Bay. Third down and the long four. Dawson being rushed and throws. And down the sidelines comes Willie Wood. Only one man can get him at the 10 and drags him down at the four-yard line. A big break. Mike Garrett finally came from behind to get Willie Wood at the four-yard line. And... The defensive prowess of Green Bay, never more evident there. Dawson was pressured, threw out to the left, and hung the ball up, and Wood cut in front of the receiver and carried the ball from midfield down to the four. And one of the few times when we will see either one of these quarterbacks, Lenny Dawson or Bart Starr, do that, that is, throw the ball when they're under pressure, when the receiver is not definitely open. Something a quarterback shouldn't do. Lenny made a mistake, and I'm sure he knows it. The officials forgot to change the football. Green Bay is back on offense, and so now the National Football League ball comes in play. Ball Horning has not yet made an appearance. Elijah Pitts and Jim Taylor, the setbacks, with Dale wide to the left. That is Pitts' touchdown on the first play, going off his own left side. And Green Bay races out in front by the score of 20 to 10. That's their biggest leading margin. Cheryl Hedrick was taken out by one of those good offensive guards at Green Bay, Fuzzy Thurston, who led the way. The Packers have exploded here, taking the offense of the Kansas City Chiefs to turn it into a touchdown for the Green Bay Packers. Don Chandler is in to try the extra point. Star is holding, and the kick is good. There's time out on the field with the score now. Green Bay, 21, Kansas City, 10. 12 minutes and 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. Green Bay now leading 21 to 10. Gene Wilson and Burt Cohen are deep. And Don Chandler will kick off for the Packers. Ball is in the air. Cohen in the end zone. We'll bring it out across the five, straight up field. The 10, the 15, lot of speed. Puts his head down and goes out near the 30-yard line. And Cohen very nearly broke through everyone. His own momentum carried him to the turf at the 30-yard line as he ducked and went under the arms of the Green Bay tacklers. And now, George Reiterman, the question becomes, can Kansas City come back? Well, the pressure is on them uh, right now. They were down by four points at halftime, received the second-half kickoff, appeared to be marching down the field uh, so that they would have a good chance to go ahead in this ballgame. And all of a sudden, Lenny Dawson did something that very, he very, very rarely does, and that is hung a pass out there and had it intercepted. First down, Taylor Wright. Dawson moving, looking for Taylor, and underthrows him at the 39-yard line. Burt Cohen is in in replacement for Mike Garrett as the other setback along with Curtis McClendon. It'll be second and ten. And, of course, Lenny Dawson hung his last pass up there. It was disastrous as Willie Wood intercepted and carried to the four, and Pitts scored. This time, Len underthrew the ball. Ball is right at the 30-yard line, second down ten. 21 to ten, Packers lead third quarter. Otis Taylor again goes wide right. Chris Burford comes to the left. Eye formation. The club in the full back, and now Cohen jumps to the left. Dawson dropping straight back. Looking. Taylor at the 40-yard line, and he's brought down in a hurry. Fumbles and recovers his own fumble at the 41-yard line. And I want to tell you that Herb Adley, the left cornerback of Michigan State, and Otis Taylor right around the neck, close lining. Taylor fumbled, but very quickly... Bounced on the ball. It's a first down at the 42-yard line, a gain of 12 on the play. And Otis Taylor has shown that he is quite a flanker in either league. And a couple of great catches today and shows fine speed. Tell our bonus to repeat is in. And now as he views so many times, Otis Taylor comes out to the left, split, but Burford is flanked to the left. 
In the hands, straight out ahead to Curtis McClendon, who gets out near the 45-yard line before Lionel Aldridge makes the tackle. Jim Tyra, the left tackle, leading the way. Tyra, a six-year veteran from Ohio State, 6'6 six, six, and 292. Ball is put down on the 45-yard line. It'll be second down and six, a gain of four for McClendon. And those here in the Los Angeles Coliseum, and I'm sure wherever you're listening, are watching and waiting to see if the Kansas City Chiefs can maintain their poise. They trail by 11. Burford to the left, Taylor flanked to the right. The Chiefs trying to come back after that interception by Wood. Dawson fakes the handoff and throws out, has his man, and down he goes at the 50-yard line. Willie Wood made the stop. And getting up is Burt Cohn, who's in replacement, as we said, for Mike Garrett, and he takes the ball to the 50-yard line. Cohn is big himself, 6'4", 220. And that's uh, a helpful thing for a passer who's throwing to a receiver to have a man who stands that tall 6'4", because he just makes that bigger a target to throw to. Both sides have shown remarkable ability to hang on to the football to catch the ball they're juggling even after they're hit. Cone was juggling that ball when he was hit, but managed to hold on to it. Third down one. Cone is trying to sweep and is slow. Trying to come to his left side on third and short yardage. The Chiefs tried to go wide, and Burt Cone could not turn the corner. Coming up was Bob Jeter, along with the linebackers, Ray Nitsky and Leroy Caffey. And that means it's fourth down. Instead of a first down, the Chiefs are forced into a punting situation. Darrell Wilson is coming on. Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson go deep for the Green Bay Packers. 21 to 10, Green Bay leads third quarter. About nine and a half minutes to go. Wilson is standing on his own 30-yard line. Scored halftime was 14-10 Green Bay, but the Packers quickly added another on the interception of Wood and a four-yard run by Pitts. Wilson gets a high kick away. Bounds down at the 20 and hops back toward Kansas City territory. Near the 25-yard line, it is down there. It will be first and 10 for the Packers. Ball is down by Al Reynolds, an offensive guard. Packers' offensive unit comes back on the field. And for the moment, the Packers have things their own way. They've got the football. They've got the lead. Third quarter. The crowd here rather quiet at the moment, and it is a large crowd at the Coliseum. Carol Dale comes out wide to the right. Lord Dollar, to repeat, is not playing. And again, Pitts and Taylor are the setbacks. This is Elijah Pitts cutting across his own right side and gets out across the 35-yard line, still on his feet to the 37. Buddy Williamson came over to make this tackle as Pitts broke a couple of tackles himself. Johnny Robinson also helped out. And now... Cheryl Hedrick, the middle linebacker of Kansas City, limps off, holding his right ankle. And Smokey Stover of Northeast Louisiana, six feet tall, 227, has come in at the all-important middle linebacker spot. It's a first down at the 37. Star dropping straight back. Looking, has time, and now is smothered under at the 29-yard line. Mark Star took one pump. And then when he raised his arm back again, the pocket closed, and down he went. E.J. Hall blitzing on the play, along with the right tackle, Buck Buchanan made the tackle. Second down and 17. And as Don Meredith, the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, mentioned at halftime, it's a bit surprising, particularly to uh, National Football League fans who have watched the Packers quite a bit and know they have great blockers. It's a bit surprising to see this tremendous pressure that the Kansas City defensive linemen have been able to put on Bart Starr this afternoon. Max McGee goes out to the left. Boyd Dower comes to the right. Mar Fleming, the tight end, is split about five yards on the right side. Pitts runs out and jumps in the slot to the left. Taylor, the lone setback. Starr dropping straight back on second down, long yardage. Looking for his man, and out of bounds he goes. He's got him. Willie Mitchell and Max McGee out of bounds after McGee made the tackle. Not enough for the first down. Inside the 45 will bring up a big third down and a long two yards. 
As George Reiserman thought, they have been operating on Willie Mitchell, the right cornerback this afternoon, a third-year veteran from Tennessee State. Now time is called on the field in this 21-10 ball game. Gerald Hedrick has come back in. Stover has gone out. There's time out on the field with the score. Green Bay 21, Kansas City 10. Back at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, the Packers have the ball on their own 44-yard line. It is third down and two. And this is Jim Simpson with George Reiterman. In this 21-10 ball game, the Packers are leading. The Chiefs, of course, hoping to stop them on this particular play in order to have them be forced to kick it away. Carol Dale comes wide to the right. McGee is on the left side. Star calling signals. Star hands to Taylor. Taylor hit from behind and gets to the 45 and dives ahead and may or may not have gotten that first down. It will be close at about the 46-yard line. And Cheryl Hedrick... The man who was injured with the right ankle came back in and is the man who made the tackle there. It's interesting to note the respect both of these quarterbacks have for the defensive lines against whom they're playing because both of them now, having third down and short yardage situations, have elected to go wide. Dawson did not make it a moment ago with uh, Kansas City. They were stopped short of the first down, and it would appear that Green Bay has been stopped short of the first down here. But both of them elected to go wide instead of going straight ahead into the defensive line trying to pick up the first down. And rather than the possibility, of course, George, of giving up good deal position, Vince Lombardi sends out his kicking unit. Don Chandler, Emmett Thomas goes deep. Mike Garrett, who has seen little action as a running back here in the second half, is back in and is deep. Chandler will kick for his own 37. No driving kick. Garrett at the 19. 20. Daylight. And he is hit down by Leroy Cappies. He crosses the 25 for the 27-yard line. It'll be first and 10 there for the Kansas City Chiefs trailing in the ball game. We pause 10 seconds for station identification. WGY Schenectady, a General Electric Broadcasting Company station. Seven minutes and five seconds to go in the third quarter. Packers leading 21-10. Bunny Dawson rolling out to his left, looking downfield, throwing downfield, and overthrows his man, Chris Clifford, at the 42-yard line. Dawson actually had time, and Burford was a couple of steps in front of the defender, Bob Jeter, but the ball was overthrown. Jim, it's interesting to note sometimes how teams will change their tactics in the second half of a football game. On the first half today, Green Bay did not blitz at all. That is, they did not send their linebackers in, shoot the gap, as they say, in against the passer, Lenny Dawson, when he was passing, but already here in the second half, three times now, they have blitzed their linebackers have sent them in. So a definite change in tactics by the Green Bay Packers defensively here in the second half. Second down, 10. Garrett jumps in the slot to the right. It is Burford on the left, Otis Taylor on the right. Dawson picks the hand off, and the linebackers are blitzing again. This time from the right side, Leroy Caffey down at the 15-yard line, and there's a flag back at the 23. They're calling back to Perry, the Green Bay defensive captain, and so it could be against the Chiefs. 21 to 10, Green Bay leading. Official, Norm Schachter comes over and says holding his charge against Kansas City. It has been refused as the ball is taken back inside the 15 and placed down on the 14-yard line. Second down and long yard, which make that third down, because they lost the down there. Third down... And 23. And here is a tough call for Lenny Dawson. Third down and 23, trailing by 10 points in the ball game. He has to go for the first down. Has to try to do something here. Green Bay can afford to gamble. They're ahead. They have Kansas City backed up. A real tough play to call. Burford and Taylor both to left. Dawson rolls to the left in a pocket, off down at the three yard line. Tremendous pressure by the Green Bay Packers. And by Henry Jordan and Willie Davis and Ron Kostelnik, the three of them were there. 
And now, the coming of Gerald Wilson will get the Chiefs partially out of the hole, but will certainly give the Green Bay Packers wonderful field position because Wilson will be nearly at the end of his own end zone when he kicks the ball. The line of scrimmage is the 27th. The ball is on the 2. On his fourth down and 35. And Wilson almost has his back foot out of that end zone. Woody Wood and Donnie Anderson are deep. Kick. It is taken by Donnie Anderson. Anderson flags go down as he's hit. More flags go down as he's hit at the 41-yard line. Anderson was hit by Aaron Brown, the number one draft choice and from Minnesota, along with E.J. Hollett. But there are a couple of flags down. And apparently, as the Packers fade back downfield of their own 35, this will be against the Packers. And George Radman, this is a good break for the Kansas City Chiefs, who trail by the score of 21 to 10. A break, and uh, again, something that you rarely see, a clipping penalty against the Green Bay Packers, and they're returning a punt. They're very careful about such things, and Vince Lombardi, their coach, has told them if there's ever any doubt whether you're in front of the man or behind him or to the side, don't throw the block because if there's anything we don't want, it's one of those 15-yard penalties. But the one of the Packers has been caught here in clipping, so they've been penalized 15 yards back to their 44-yard line. From the 44, first and 10, 6 minutes, 18 seconds to go, third quarter. Elijah Pete starts up to the left and is knocked down. I'm telling you, that time, the Green Bay defensive guards pulling were simply shoved aside. And the Kansas City defense, led by Chuck Hurston and Andy Rice, came in to knock him down for a loss from the 44 back to the 42, second and 12. And a surprising uh, play, actually, Jim, because, as you mentioned, it looked as if Elijah Pitts had a lot of interference out in front of him, a couple of guards in front of him, and all of a sudden they disappeared or weren't effective, and Pitts went down. Very surprising. Darrell Dale comes wide to the right. Fleming is split to the right. McGee is on the left side. Pitts and Taylor again the setbacks. Dark star dropping straight back with time across the center. And has Max McGee out in Kansas City territory, not the first down, but very close to it at the 48-yard line. Johnny Robinson made the stop, and now we come up to another big third down play. The last time Kansas City was able to hold Green Bay, Green Bay punted. Kansas City lost 25 yards on the series of downs and had to kick from its own end zone. Five minutes, 10 seconds to go, third quarter, 21 to 10, the Packers lead. 14 down at halftime, Woody Wood's interception broke things open a little bit as the second half began. Harold Dale to the right, McGee to the left. Jim Taylor has got the first down across the 45, going off the own, his own left side of the line. Chuck Kirsten made the tackle as Bob Skaronski and Fred Thurston opened up some running room for him, and the ball was put down on the 43. First and ten for the Packers, and they're on the move again. And this, the first Super Bowl, the AFL-NFL Championship from the Los Angeles Coliseum. Shadows beginning to creep in from the left side of the Coliseum now. Lots of time left as McGee goes to the left on first down. Dale comes to the right. Mark Starr dropping way back, looking, throwing, and the receiver falls down. Harold Dale fell down at the 27-yard line, and Freddie Williamson backed off of Dale as though he had a hot poker in his hands. He didn't want any defensive interference play called there. There wasn't one. Williamson had actually uh, given Dale a good jolt, but it was before the ball was in the air, and, of course, Freddie wanted to get away from him in a hurry, having uh, knocked him down so he would not be called for pass interference. But, of course, you can uh, bump these receivers coming downfield as long as the ball is not yet in the air, and that was the situation there. Williamson uh, building Dale when it appeared that Dale might be going by him, knocking him down, but this was before the ball was in the air, so no pass interference was called. Max McGee this time runs out to the right, and Carroll Dale drops off to the left. It is second down, 10, from the 43. 
Start dropping straight back again. He has Taylor a little swing down at the 45, 44. It wants, breaks the tackle, and is back down again on the 44. That's a case of Bobby Bell coming up to help out Jerry Mays. Mays was the first man to make contact. And then Bobby Bell, the left side linebacker, came up. And the ball is put down now, back on the 44-yard line. And so it's a loss on the play. It's third down, 11. Three minutes, 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. And there's time out on the field with the score, Green Bay, 21, Kansas City, 10. Green Bay has the ball on the 44-yard line of the Kansas City Chiefs. It is third down and 11. Big down for the Packers as well as the Chiefs as the Chiefs trail by 11 points, 21-10. And as the shadows begin to come over the Coliseum, they have turned the lights on here. They're not needed at the present time, but uh, possibly will be later on in the fourth quarter. But they've already turned the lights on here in the Coliseum. On third and 11, Carol Dale goes wide to the left. Woody Mitchell is the man on him. Mark Starr dropping straight back, looking as his man, Max McGee, in between three people at the 33-yard line. They all converged on the tackle, but he made the catch, and it's a first down at the 28. Bobby Bell, Freddie Williamson, all there, along with Bobby Hunt. The defenders, the three of them, seemed to lay off McGee until he had the ball, and then they closed the vice, but it was too late. Boyd Dower went out in the game early, has not been back, will not be back, and McGee has been called on for yeoman duty. There is Jim Taylor trying to set up his line, and Taylor, as has been found out today, isn't going anywhere. Now Buck Buchanan throws him down. Taylor says nothing. The official pushes off Buck Buchanan. No penalty is called as yet, and none will be. The defensive line of the Kansas City Chiefs has been tremendous today, as has the defensive line of the Green Bay Packers. The ball that they want to be one to be found for the Kansas City Chiefs has been in the defensive secondary. And, of course, the big mistake of Lenny Dawson when he hung the pass up and Woody Wood intercepted. Second down and eight from the 26. Darrell Dale to the left, Max McGee to the right. Star with the same two setbacks. Gives it to Taylor. Taylor stuttering at the line. And down he goes. Darrell Hedrick. Made the tackle after across the 25 and down to the 21-yard line. Chuck Hurston also in on the tackle. And I would imagine George Rodman that Jim Taylor went back to the huddle after that last little altercation with Buchanan and said, give me the ball again. I don't know whether it was even necessary for him to say that. Bart Starr might have just realized that on his own, that uh, Jim Taylor is very angry now, and this is a good time to give a fellow a football and see what uh, he'll do with it. Third down three, they are in perfect position for the field goal, so let's see what Starr does on third down and three. The flanker is Dale as Taylor goes wide to the left. Taylor gets a good block, breaks two tackles, and has the first down across the 15. And there again, as he's shown on his 14-yard touchdown run, the individual effort of Jim Taylor brought off that first down. Bobby Bell made the stop, but the ball is placed down on the 13. The Packers leading by 11, now threatening to break it wide open here in the third quarter. With a little bit less than two minutes to go. Out of the huddle with McGee to the left. Dale to the right. First down from the 13. Star fakes the handoff, looks, has time, throws in the end zone, great catch by Mike McGee, off one hand, and it's a touchdown for the Green Bay Packers. And again, the pass off of the play action with Bart Starr first faking the running play to one of his running backs, then stepping back and hitting McGee in the end zone. Two fine fakers as quarterbacks here, not only great passers, but both of these quarterbacks can handle the ball very well, help their pass offense by making the running plays frequently before going back to pass. Well, Max McGee, who played so well in the National Football League Championship game, coming on late, has done so again. Chandler's in and kicks the extra point. And all Green Bay is far out in front. With less than a minute to 
to go in the third quarter. And that explosive Kansas City offense will now have to come to the fore if the Chiefs are to get back into this ballgame. Another reminder about further NBC Radio sports coverage, and that is the Bob Hope Desert Classic coming up on NBC Radio February the 4th and 5th. At the same time, it will remind you that for all the sports coverage every weekend, tune in to NBC's monitor. In the first part of this ball game, Max McGee, who just got that touchdown pass, caught a 37-yarder from Bart Starr, and the Packers went in front 7-0. The Chiefs tied it on a 7-yard pass from Dawson to McClendon in the second quarter, and then Jim Taylor broke 14 yards for a score to make it 14-7, Green Bay. At the end of the half, just 58 seconds to go, Mike Mercer kicked a 31-yard field goal, and it ended 14-10. But then Willie Wood's interception returned to the four in the third quarter as the second half began. Hit scoring on the first play from four yards out, made it 21-10. to 10. You just heard this march by the Packers, capped by a 13-yard pass to Max McGee to make it 28-10. to 10. Now, Don Chandler will kick off again. Ian Wilson and Burt Cohen are deep. Cohen watches it hit at the 12, takes it at the 2. Comes back up the left side to the 10, the 15, and down he goes. As he gets across the 15, and up to about the 17. Knocked down there by Doug Hart and Jim Weatherax. Now Lynn Dawson, brought again, will have to put the Chiefs on the scoreboard. The American Football League trying to prove to the National Football League and its fans that it has quite a football team and has quite a league. And the National Football League, Green Bay Packers, trying to prove that they are the better league. They will verge in a couple of years anyway. Taylor is to the right. On first down from the 18. And off and straight ahead goes the fullback, Curtis McClendon. Henry Jordan made the tackle, and perhaps there's a yard gain on the play. It'll be second down and nine. And the pressure continues to mount now on Lenny Dawson, who is calling the signals on offense for the Kansas City Chiefs because he is definitely in a position now where he has to play catch-up uh, football. This means he has to eliminate the con more conservative part of his offense, you might say, and Green Bay knows this, so he is handicapped a bit at this point. Well, George, that's the end of the third quarter. The score now, Green Bay 28, Kansas City 10. 18 points separate the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs have the ball. Second down, nine. The ball on their own 19-yard line. Make that the 18-yard line. As Otis Taylor hustles out to the right, Chris Burford goes to the left. With Clinton and Garrett, the setbacks. Carolyn, the tight end, is also split to the right. Dawson dropping straight back. And upfield, and it's almost intercepted. The receiver is Curtis McClendon. And it was almost intercepted by Willie Wood. And if Willie had caught that one, he would have set up for perhaps even score a second touchdown. Famous story of Willie Wood of USC. He wrote to the Packers and asked for a trial. Vince Lombardi said, I'd like to take a look at you. He's down his seventh year and <laughs> one of the great safeties of the National Football League. Shows you should always answer your mail. <laughs> Third and nine for the Chiefs, and they've got to pull off this first down and get the ball up again. Dawson rolling to the right, looking, faking a pass. Now throwing, and it is almost intercepted again at the 30-yard line. Intended there for Chris Burford, but defending was Herb Adley. It is incomplete, and fourth down, and the Chiefs will have to kick the ball away again. And Lenny Dawson, who had a good first half, percentage-wise, is having his troubles here in the second half. And a very smart defensive play by Herb Adderley, then, who was not drawn up by Lenny Dawson's fake of a run. Lenny was chased around, held the ball up as up to pass, and started out uh, like he was going to run. But Adderley stayed right with his man, wouldn't come up on Dawson, so he was there to knock the ball down after it was thrown. Jerry Wilson is standing on his own, too. Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson are deep. Low-driving kick. Anderson fades back to his 42, runs to his left, gets to the 45, and runs into a couple of people led by Bobby Plod, number 14, who made the tackle. But it'll be a first down for the Green Bay Packers, who to continue to control the ball and controlling the game at the point, 28 to 10. 
Still in the fourth quarter. Ball is placed down right on the 46 yard line of Green Bay. And the lack of height on Gerald Wilson's punts is uh, a bit surprising. Almost all pro or college teams will try to get their kicker to kick the ball high into the air so that the men going down under the punt have time to get down and defend. But Gerald Wilson has really been booming out some line drives. Back is now hoping to exert pressure. Send Carroll Dale to the right. Star hands off to Jim Taylor, makes a fine move at the line of scrimmage, and as a result, picks up about 40 yards off to midfield before Buck Buchanan wrestles him down. Taylor started to come to the outside, saw that blocked, and moving off his left foot, cut back inside and picked up four yards to the 50. It'll be second down and six. 21 to 10 to score. Green Bay leading 14 minutes to go in the ball again. 14 to 10 was the halftime score. Darryl Dale trotting out again to the right. Max McGee, who has scored on two touchdown passes of 13 and 37 yards, is to the left. Paul Horning has not played. Starr faking the handoff. Going deep to Max McGee, who's trying to beat Mitchell. And Mitchell makes the interception inside the 15-yard line. The Kansas City Chiefs take over. They've been operating on Woody Mitchell all afternoon. This time, McGee had a step on Mitchell, but the ball was underthrown, and Willie made the interception. Fine play by Mitchell. The ball is on the 11-yard line of Kansas City. And now, with nearly 15 minutes of football left, the Kansas City Chiefs drop back on the field. 28 to 10, the Packers lead. And this, the first Super Bowl. Out to the right comes Otis Taylor. Orford goes to the left. And this National Football League town, Los Angeles, is yelling for the Chiefs to go. Dawson back to pass. Lots of time. Luke Swan has. That's Curtis McClendon, not Otis Taylor, but it's still a great catch. He was on his tiptoes and lunged forward at the 35 and fell to the 38. And, George, it's plays like that that can excite and inspire a team. Just a great individual effort, but you can also see on that particular play the great pass defensive work done by the Green Bay defensive unit as a whole because Lenny Dawson must have looked to three other receivers before he finally threw to McClinton, and none of them were open. Taylor on a quick pitch to Taylor, trying to step around his man and cannot get away, and finally falls forward out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Picked up of about five on the play. Dawson simply straightened up and threw to Taylor. National Football League fans have seen that work many times to Bobby Mitchell. They simply try to get the ball out there one on one and hope that Mitchell will step around the defender. Here they were hoping that Taylor could step around Herb Adam. After he got him on an ankle and down he went. Second down and long five as. Taylor's to the right, Burford to the left, Dawson looking to Burford, has him at the 50, down to the 48-yard line. Chris Burford, that's enough for the first down, and the Chiefs trailing 28-10, to 10, come back. Bob Jeter made the stop at the 46. Dawson now going to his short passes, of course, Green Bay with this uh, big lead. will tend to lay back a bit, figuring we'll give them the short one. We just don't want to be hurt with the, the long bomb, as they say. Dawson, realizing this, is trying to pick Green Bay apart at this point by just uh, concentrating on hitting those short ones in front of the Green Bay defenders who are laying back a bit farther. Taylor to the right. Dawson rolling to the right, looking for Taylor. He's trying to beat his man. He's in back of Adderley, but can't quite reach it in the end zone. A legal procedure or motion is charged against Kansas City. Flag is down, and I believe it was Otis Taylor who started off sides and then came back on. And so that will cost them five yards if the Packers choose to take it. Otis Taylor, we notice, is instead of going back to the huddle, just walking over or running over now toward the Kansas City bench. Frequently, when a pass receiver has gone down the field that far, he had to run about 60 yards on that play. He will just automatically take himself out of the ball game for a play, allowing a fresh man to come back in. Frank Pitts has gone in after the long run by Otis Taylor, and will replace him as flanker. Pitts, a second-year man from Southern College, comes from Atlanta, Georgia, 6'2", 190, lot of speed. The illegal procedure charge against Kansas City. 
has been accepted and it moves the ball back to the 49 of Kansas City where it is first down and 15. 11 minutes, 26 seconds to go, 28 to 10, the score. Pitts comes wide right. Dawson dropping straight back, under pressure, and down with him is Willie Davis, rolling him down on the other side of the 40-yard line at the 38. Line of scrimmage, remember, was the 49 of Kansas City. A loss of 11. They'll tack that onto the 15 that they need, and it'll be second down and 26. The Packers leading 28 to 10, and this the Super Bowl. Dallas, as we said, began to creep across the Coliseum floor here in Los Angeles, but the temperature has been in the 70s. A beautiful day to play a football game. Otis Taylor back in, comes wide to the right. Burford goes to the left. Rolling to the right is Dawson looking for Taylor, and it is knocked down at the last minute by Herb Adderley. A fine defensive play, getting one hand. In front of Taylor and knocking the ball down and out of bounds. It would not have been enough for the first down. It was, the ball was at the 46. They've got to go to the 36, remember, for the first down. Third down and 26 yards. Andy Dawson trying to throw a down and out pattern to Taylor about 15 yards downfield. And if anything, uh, that's the difference between these two ball clips so far because... Art Starr has been able to hit those down and out patterns or down and in patterns 10, 15 yards downfield with relative ease all afternoon, whereas Dawson has not been able to, not because of his lack of ability, but because of the fine Green Bay defense. A little swing pass just knocked down at the last minute by Bob Brown. They had sent Mike Garrett just over the line of scrimmage. Dawson went back and tried to loop it to him. Brown got one hand on it and knocked it down at the line of scrimmage. As the Chiefs tried to get Garrett with a little running room, hoping to pick up the 26 yards that they need. They did not. It's fourth down from their own 39-yard line. Packers leading by the score of 28 to 10. Gerald Wilson is back. Willie Wood and Donnie Anderson go deep, standing inside their own 25 to take Wilson's spot, which is in the air. This one is high. Beautiful. Anderson lets it hit on the three, and it goes into the end zone. First and ten for the Packers at the 20-yard line. The Packers with the ball and with the 28-10 lead. Kansas City's defensive unit comes on the field, and Green Bay's offensive unit, and Elijah Pitts again goes out. And we make note of the fact, because there was a great deal said, that perhaps Paul Horning would play. He has not played yet. There's time out on the field with the score. Green Bay, 28, Kansas City, 10. At the Coliseum in Los Angeles, this is Jim Simpson, along with George Rowling. And, of course, once this game is over, we'll be going to the victors' dressing room. And as of this moment, it looks as though, George Rowling, you'll have to head to the Packers' dressing room. Because Green Bay leads at the moment by the score of 28 to 10. 10 minutes, 45 seconds to go. The Packers with the ball on their own 20, first and 10. Bart Starr still in, calling signals, dropping straight back. As time looks for his receivers, as Carol Dale at the 44-yard line, and he has the ball and steps out of bounds there. Russell out of bounds by Willie Mitchell. But that time, more than he has had in many of his past plays, Bart Starr had all day, as they say, in a rocking chair from which to throw. And we note that uh, just like two weeks ago down in Dallas when he was ahead in the fourth quarter, ahead of the Dallas Cowboys by a couple of touchdowns, Bart Starr is not inclined to play conservative football and try to run out the clock. He wants to keep his team moving, wants to keep scoring. Gerald Dale goes wide right. Max McGee with two touchdowns to his credit is split left. First down from the 44. Star straight back. Looking to throw, and McGee is all by himself. Mitchell is climbing his back, and Russ is in down at the 17-yard line. The ball is taken away by Freddie Williamson. But the officials say, no, sir, McGee has it. And it's a first down for the Packers at the 17. Talk about Ryan and Cowboy. The ball is now put back on the 18. Willie Mitchell climbed McGee's back and rode him about 10 yards before he finally went down. 
but the Packers leading 28 to 10 have come right back. Ten minutes, five seconds to go. Fourth quarter, the National Football League's Packers representatives playing extremely well, executing, and leading. Star calling signals. Hands off to Taylor, who goes straight ahead, but not for much. Bobby Bell, who has played a good ball game today, and his left side corner spot made the tackle, along with Jerry Mays, the all-league left end. Little or no game, perhaps a happy yard, we'll call it still second down and about 10. 28 to 10 the score. Max McGee has caught two touchdown passes. Elijah Pitts has run for one of four yards. Jim Taylor's run for one of uh, 14 yards. And McClinton caught a touchdown pass for Kansas City of seven yards. Star back, looking to throw, throwing out to the left, and as Carol Dale at the 12 yard line. He's knocked down there by Willie Mitchell. And never has it been so apparent, George Radiman, that an offense is working on one man in the defensive secondary. They certainly seem to be picking on Mitchell. It's not, I don't say they seem to be. They are picking on uh, Willie Mitchell all afternoon. Uh, even when they're not throwing the ball, they've been running quite a few plays around that and just keeping the pressure on him continuously. Bart Starr has almost been able to complete passes. I don't want to say at Willie, at Will uh, over there, you might say, going either to the inside or the outside. Third down and three from the 11-yard line. Dale is wide to the right. McGee is on the left side. Fleming is on the right side. Star hands to Pitts. Boy, he had an opening for a moment that looked like he was going to go all the way, but Johnny Robinson knifed him down at the five. Morris Gregg was leading the way, and Gregg was actually out, knocking down a man at the 10-yard line, and Pitts for the moment looked as though he had the angle of the corner. But Robinson, with great lateral speed, came from the middle of the line, over to the outside on the left side, and knocked him down at the five. That's the first down at the five, however, for the, for the Packers. By the way, Robinson said, if you want to be a good defensive back, tennis is a great sport. Bart Starr is now 15 for 23. What an afternoon. First down five, and straight ahead goes Jim Taylor for a couple of yards, perhaps down to the three or the two and a half. Bobby Hunt, the left side safety, made the tackle. We pause now 10 seconds for station identification. WGY Schenectady, a, a General Electric Broadcasting Company station. Ball is on the two yard line, second down. Pitts and Taylor, the setbacks, star calling signals. Are still calling signals. Jim Taylor sweeping wide at the five, at the three, and with his effort gets down close to the goal line, but they'll mark it on about the six inch line. Johnny Robinson, who the last time made a tackle of Pitts on the left side, this time makes the tackle of Taylor on the right side. Third down and a few inches. 28 to 10. Packers lead. Fourth quarter. Six minutes, 50 seconds to go. Running to the left side. Taylor and Pitts. As Green Bay has a strong right. Ball is given to Pitts. Pitts slides off and goes into the end zone. Going off his own left side. Was hit at the line of scrimmage. A pass Willie Mitchell and went into the end zone. And it is now 34 to 10. Green Bay has broken this first Super Bowl wide open. Better than 63,000, we understand. Chandler kicks, and the kick is good. There's time out on the field to score now. Green Bay, 35. Kansas City, 10. Gene Thomas and Burt Cohn are deep for Kansas City. Pete Bethard has been warming up on the sidelines. 63,036 looking on as Don Chandler kicks off again for the Packers. A high kick. 
Cohen and Wilson both waited. It's thrown at the one. Coming straight up field. Across the 10. Going to his right. Across the 15. Out to the 20-yard line. And that's about all. Jim Grabowski jumps in to make the tackle. Along with Tommy Crutcher, a linebacker. And Redback, a flanker. who makes his second tackle on the kickoff today. Kansas City trotting out with Pete Beathard of USC. An All-American here. Now with Kansas City. Making an appearance since his third year with Kansas City. And of course, now they realize it, and the band sets up for a hump. Bedford is a real scrambling quarterback, and with a flick of the wrist can throw it a mile. He sends Burford to the left, Taylor to the right. Long count by Bedford. He drops straight back. Looks, throws, has Burford across the 40 to the 42 yard line. Bob Jeter made the tackle there, but that's enough for the first down for the Kansas City Chiefs. 35 to 10, the Packers lead. Score at halftime was 14 to 10, with the Kansas City Chiefs having the better of it in all statistical departments except the scoreboard. And again, should Beathard can care to continue throwing that type of pattern, it should be open because undoubtedly now Green Bay will lay off farther and farther on pass defense, giving up the short pass, making sure they don't get hit with the long one, though. Beathard dropping straight back again, looking now, now on the sides to run, across the 40, across the 45, gets a great block at the 45, down the sidelines and out of bounds with another first down at the 44-yard line. Willie Wood ran him out of bounds along with Bob Jeter, but Ray Nitsky had the boom lowered on him as he went to reach for the scrambling Pete Bethard. Wallace put down on the 44, first and 10, and Bethard very quickly has taken them with two first downs. Five minutes and 17 seconds to go. In a moment, George Rodman will be heading for the dressing room. But before you go, George, after Bethard drops straight back, we want to ask you something. Bethard back. Throws and overthrows Mike Garrett at the 40-yard line. George, very quickly, your observations on Kansas City and Green Bay. Well, I think uh, it was something that was predicted by a lot of people in Kansas City just was not able to stop the passing of Bart Starr, the passing offense of Green Bay this afternoon. Kansas City, I think, stopped the Green Bay running attack far better than anybody here in this stadium or watching this football game or listening to it anticipated, but Starr just picked him apart with his passing, seemed to be able to complete passes whenever he wanted to do so, and I think that's been the difference between these two ball clubs, his ability to complete passes whenever he wanted uh, against the fact that Kansas City could not do so because of the fine defensive secondary of Green Bay. Thank you, George Rodman, as flags fly as the Packers jump and the Kansas City team jumps. And it could be, of course, a legal procedure with the new quarterback Beathard in there, and that's exactly what it is. Boston five yards. Yards as George Rodman heads now for a dressing room. Uh, we should have a report at the end of the game. The ball is on the 49-yard line, and so will be second down and 15. Our spotters today for Green Bay at Lovelock and Harry Sanford to Kansas City. We appreciate their work as this game is now going down into history. For those who will say, I told you so, the National League Packers are better, there are those who say that Kansas City, with the interception by Willie Wood, the ball that had been misspotted and is now two yards extra are given to the Kansas City Chiefs put on the 49er, the Green Bay Packers. There are those who say that the Chiefs just had a bad day. May we remind you that the common football draft starts this year, and in three years, the National Football League and the American Football League will have completed its merger. So the question will become academic. But right now, the plaudits belong to the National Football League. Back goes Beathard, and down he goes. Bob Brown led the way, along with Lionel Aldrich. Brown, the rookie from Arkansas A.M. and M. 6'5", 260, was in on Beathard and threw him for an 11-yard loss. Make that 12 inside the 40 to the 39. 35 to 10 is the score. Fourth quarter, five minutes and a few seconds to go.
Deep breath and hand on hip, leaning into the huddle as he so often does. Now sends his Chiefs out of the huddle. With Otis Taylor coming to the right. And Burford, who has had a good day, to the left. Burford and Taylor have had a good day. Back goes Beathard. On third down. Long pass downfield. Intended downfield for Chris Burford. Tapped away at the final moments at the 32-yard line. And that would have been enough for the first down. Bob Jeter broke it up. And the Chiefs will have to kick it away. Less than five minutes, 4.39 to play. 35 to 10, Green Bay leads. Donnie Anderson and Red go deep as Gerald Wilson is coming to handle the punting, stepping back inside his own 25-yard line. NBC Radio proud, proud to bring you this AFL-NFL championship. We remind you of the Bob Hope Desert Classic on NBC Radio, February 4th and 5th. Wilson boots the ball high and deep. Fair catch called for by Willie Wood at the 18-yard line, first and 10 Packers. Packers this afternoon dressed in their green jerseys, gold pants, white numerals. Kansas City, which had not lost all year long, dressed in their white uniforms with red numerals. They now find themselves trailing by 25 points, 35 to 10. Harold Dale goes out wide to the right. Anderson and Grabowski are now on the backfield for Kansas City, or rather for Green Bay. Paul Horning has not made an appearance. Grabowski is the quarterback, hands to Anderson around the left side, across the 25, still on his feet, and hit from behind as he got to the 30-yard line, out to the 32-yard line. Anderson showing great speed, hit from behind by E.J. Holland. Gail Gillingham was leading the way, the right guard, as Vince Lombardi now has begun the substitute. Bob Long from Wichita is in, Carol Dale is in, but the quarterback is Zeke Fredkowski, an 11-year veteran from Georgia. Jim Grabowski, the rookie from Illinois, and Donnie Anderson, the rookie from Texas Tech, are both in. First and ten. And off to Grabowski. And Grabowski nearly lost the ball, had to turn around for it, and when he did, Buck Buchanan wrestled him down. <laughs> the public address announcer said Grabowski has recovered Grabowski's fumble. The ball is down at the 32 yard line of Green Bay. They lead 35 to 10. Clock running less than four minutes to go now. Bob Warren goes out wide to the right. Zeke Kutkowski calling signals. The late afternoon sun in Los Angeles. Donnie Anderson going to the right side, gets away from Hedrick, but Hedrick reaches over and with one hand grabs him as Freddie Williamson has been leveled and is out lying on the turf at the 33-yard line because it is over Freddie Williamson, but Donnie Anderson tripped and he may have been hit. In any event, he is down and time has been called, so this time out on the field. The score, Green Bay, 35, Kansas City, 10. Jim Simpson, along with George Rodman and Freddie Williamson, is still out at the 33-yard line, and they're working over him there. Could have been at the knee of Donnie Anderson, hit him in the helmet. 35 to 10 is the score. Two minutes and 46 seconds to go. Pass it was 7-7. The Packers came right back. Jim Taylor going over his own left side and then cutting to the outside and running 14 yards for a score to make it 14 to 7. But again, the Kansas City Chiefs came back and on a 31-yard field goal with less than a minute to go in the first half by Mike Mercer, closed the gap to 14 to 10. And that's the way they went to the dressing room and repeat. Kansas City had slightly the better in the statistics, even though Green Bay was leading by four points. But in the third quarter, in the early moments, Lenny Dawson went back, was trapped, and hung the ball up, throwing it out to his left. Willie Wood cut in front of the receiver, picked it off, and ran all the way to the floor where Mike Garrett nailed it. On the first play, Elijah Pitts went off the left side for four yards in the score to make it 21 to 10. Well, then the Packers were really rolling, and on the 13-yard pass play, again McGee scored to make it 28 to 10 in the third quarter. 
And here in the fourth quarter, Elijah Pitts scoring over from about, well, half a foot out, made it 35 to 10. And of course, it has been Don Chandler who's converted after each of the touchdowns. Now a moment of concern as Hank Stram has come out and gone back. Freddie Williamson is still out on the 33-yard line after that play that saw Donnie Anderson sweep to the right. Hedrick get an arm on him, and I believe they're going to bring out the stretcher for Freddie Williamson, the seven-year veteran from Northwestern, 6'3", 209, 28 years old. They have the stretcher out now, and he will be taken from the field. 35 to 10, and now, down in front of us, and he's being asked to leave, a young boy had run across the field, run up to Paul Horning and asked for an autograph, and someone politely asked him to leave. Fred Williamson is being carried off the field by a stretcher. If we can, we'll have a report for you before we leave the air on how he is. We'll certainly try to get it. We do know that Boyd Dowler injured his shoulder and is out for the game. That happened in the first period. Bob Long goes out wide to the right. Harold Dale comes to the left. It is third down and eight. Emma Thomas has replaced Williamson. Rutkowski back and throwing deep for Carol Dale. And does not overthrow him, but rather throws more toward the middle of the field. And Dale was out to the left. Willie Mitchell was back along with Johnny Robinson defending. And so now it'll be fourth down and eight. Well, the city of Los Angeles and those concerned with the Super Bowl game, the AFL-NFL championship, have put on quite a display. There have been bands from all over the country, a solo performance at halftime by Al Hurt, and we have been privileged to have in our broadcast booth, before the game, Bob Hope, and at halftime, Lance Allworth of the San Diego Chargers, Don Meredith of the Dallas Cowboys. Quite an afternoon and quite a day for the Green Bay Packers. Anderson handled the putting this time. as a left-footed kicker. It goes by Emmett Thomas at the 25 and will roll dead at about the 22-yard line. Where the Kansas City Chiefs will take over first and 10. Checking that clock, two minutes and 22 seconds to go as Hank Stram is walking the sidelines by himself. Near a few players. Realizing it has been quite an afternoon for the Green Bay Packers, not his own Kansas City Chiefs. But then again, this is the first Super Bowl. There will be a chance for two teams, whether they be the Packers or Chiefs, remains to be seen. But again, one year from now. Pete Beathard in, has only one setback, rolls to his right, going for broke, drawing deep to Otis Taylor. Taylor cannot catch up to the ball. He and Herb Adderley collided at the 33. Adderley fell down. Taylor kept his feet. Tom Brown tried to cover him, but had the ball been thrown a little bit shorter, Otis Taylor might have caught it. Bethard threw it well, but the collision between Adderley and Otis Taylor meant that Otis was slowed up quite a bit, and he could not reach the ball. Second down and ten. Less than two minutes to go by a couple of seconds. The officials, and there's six of them here today, three from each league plus six audience, go to each sideline and say less than two minutes to go. A crowd of 63,036 in perfect football weather have watched this, the first AFL-NFL championship game. Report from the bench. Freddie Williamson, the cornerback from Northwestern, who was carried from the field, is not believed to have been hurt seriously, which is certainly good news. Method brings his team out of the huddle. Otis Taylor comes to the right. Chris Burford goes to the left. Mike Garrett and Curtis McClendon are setbacks. Method dropping straight back this time. In a pressure pocket and ducks his head and his own momentum carries him down to the ground at the 15-yard line. Beathard ducked under one tackle, but his legs went from under him and he could not get up to start running or at least throw again. Jim Weatherax, a defensive tackle, a rookie from Los Angeles State, by the way, was the man who was pressuring Pete Beathard. So it is third down and 16 with a minute and a half to go. 35 to 10. The Packers lead. They have led all the way. They've been tied once, 7 to 7. Method taking a long time on the other. The Coliseum here gaily decorated with an NFL, AFL golden crown at midfield. Each of the end zones done in gold with the Chiefs letters at one end in red and the Packers in the other in green. 
Safety. Beathard drops back. Throws long and way over throws and almost overthrows the entire Kansas City bench. But Chris Beathard was the intended receiver. Fourth down and 16. A minute and 24 seconds to go. In a few moments, once this game is over, we will be going down to the dressing room and you will hear the words of the Green Bay Packers. As Pat Summerall and George Rodman will be there to talk with him. And I'm sure it'll be quite a victory ceremony. And I'm sure that each team, including the Packers for the Chiefs, has added respect for one another. Gerald Wilson, standing at the goal line. Kicks the ball away. A driving kick, sending Donnie Anderson and Willie Wood back. It is Wood who takes it at the 31. Coming to the left side, pursued one block, takes down two men. But Bobby Ply, number 14, who is very quick to get down under any kick, makes the tackle at the 27-yard line. A minute and 12 seconds to go. Flag down on the play. And apparently this will be stepped off against the Green Bay Packers. 1.12 to go. As the officials now step it off. Clipping. And as George Raderman told you, one of Vince Lombardi's edicts and axioms is that unless you're absolutely sure, do not try to block the man and be charged with a clip. But this is the second time in this half. And this time it might be because the Green Bay Packers are going with a great many of their reserves. Those boys are a little bit over-anxious to do well in this game. But Kowski is in. Call signals from the 13-yard line. Hand off to his fullback, Jim Grabowski, the bonus rookie from Illinois, but Buck Buchanan wrestles him down at the 15-yard line after a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight. One minute to go in the first AFL-NFL championship, the Super Bowl. Packers 35 and the Kansas City Chiefs 10. Before George Reiterman left for the dressing rooms, it was his observation that the Kansas City Chiefs simply could not stop the passing of Bart Starr, who had quite a day, throwing long, throwing short. Jim Taylor had a great day running, too. Donnie Anderson hit behind the line of scrimmage, gets away from one man, goes around that side, across the 20, and out to the 25. Before Jerry Mays, the defensive left end, knocked him out of bounds at the 26. Forrest Gregg was leading the way. And, of course, that stops the clock. With 29 seconds to go. One more reminder about the Bob Hope Desert Classic on NBC Radio on February the 4th and 5th. Now Red Mack, who has seen action with several National Football League teams, a former All-American at Notre Dame, number 27, comes in. And he replaces Bob Long as the flanker back. And Red immediately went to the wrong side and now has been told to come over to the left side, which he does. He split to the left. Lepkowski hands to Anderson. Anderson trying to find running room, gets across the line of scrimmage to 25, and E.J. Holland tackles him from behind. The clock is running with 20 seconds to go. The Packers out in front by 25 points, and this is the first Super Bowl. 10 seconds to go. The Packers standing around, not willing to get off another play necessarily. The Kansas City Chiefs are willing to walk to the sideline. And the Kansas City Chiefs, many of them, are walking toward the Green Bay Packers. Cheryl Hedrick taking the hand of Bart Starr. All of them have come over and are talking to the Packers. That's the end of the game with the final score. Green Bay 35 and Kansas City 10. We'll be back in a moment for the final wrap-up of today's game. Jim Simpson, along with George Ryderman, back at the Coliseum in Los Angeles. And don't go away yet. We expect to be able to go to the Green Bay Packers dressing room in a few moments, where George Ryderman and Pat Summerall are, and we'll be talking with the Packers and, of course, their winning coach, Vince Lombardi. While we have this opportunity of this exciting day, and you may ask, how can a 35-10 to 10 ball game be exciting? Well, it was, because it was 14-10 to 10 at the half, and, of course, this game meant so much. It meant the National Football League for the first time putting its prestige and its experience on the line against the seven-year-old American Football League, which for years has wanted to do just that, put its prestige on the line against the National Football League. Well, it's the Green Bay Packers and the NFL that came off with a 35-10 to 10 victory. But a reminder that it was 14-10 to 10 at the half, and again, one more time, 
because this game will be chronicled in your newspapers and in magazines for some weeks to come. Let us go over the scoring plays. Max McGee scored first, first quarter on a 37-yard touchdown play. Second quarter on a seven-yard pass to McClendon. It was Kansas City tying it up 7-7 seven seven with 10 minutes and 41 seconds to go, and the Chiefs at that time looked like they were right in the ball game. But the Packers came right back, and a long touchdown pass on third down short yardage to Caroldale was called back because of illegal motion, and interior lineman had moved. Mark Starr, who had a tremendous afternoon, put together a 73-yard touchdown marks, the final 14 of which were taken by Jim Taylor to make it 14-7, to and from there on, the Packers were never seriously in trouble. At the end of the first half, Mike Mercer kicked a 31-yard field goal, 14-10, to but the Chiefs were never to come close. In the third quarter, in the first two and a half minutes, Willie Wood intercepted the pass by Len Dawson, but hung in the air for the moment, went down the sidelines. Mike Garrett came over and knocked him down on the floor, but Elijah Pitts went over on the first play from four yards out to make it 21-10. to The Packers went right back into action, scoring later on a 13-yard pass play from Dark Star, again, who had a great afternoon, to Max McGee, 28-10. And later in the fourth quarter, Elijah Pitt scored his second touchdown of the day from about one foot out. And so Max McGee has scored two touchdowns, and Elijah Pitts has scored two touchdowns. Jim Taylor won. And for Kansas City, McClendon got the only touchdown, and Mike Mercer kicked the field goal. Paul Horning did not play today. When Vince Lombardi went to make substitutions late in the game, he went to Jim Grabowski and Donnie Anderson. He did not go to Paul Horning. In a few moments, we'll be going down to the dressing room. And of course, for the Green Bay Packers, well, Vince Lombardi said, this is not that big a game. There are many other games that have meant just as much to me, but I am sure, and those who saw the Packers today at their hotel and their coach, Vince Lombardi, know that this game indeed did mean a lot to them, and they've come off with the victory by the score of 35-10. to 10. As for the Kansas City Chiefs, well, it'll be a long spring, but summer will be back, and they'll be in training once again for the American Football League Championship. And by the way, in 1967, this year for the first time, there will be further comparisons, although not on the championship level, of American Football League football and the National Football League, because many teams will play exhibitions against one another. So what has happened here today, on January 15, 1967, is simply the kickoff the inaugural of these teams of the American Football League and the National Football League getting together. And as we said, by 1970, it will be one league. The merger will have been accomplished. In the meantime, of course, there is the common draft of football players that will take place between now and then. There will be no more of this bidding between the two leagues. And so, the Green Bay Packers go back to Green Bay or wherever it is that their ball players may live secure and happy and confident in the fact that they have proven once again that they are quite a football team. Since Vince Lombardi went there in 1959, starting in 1960, the Packers have either been in the championship of the National Football League or the playoff bowl every year. This year, they won their fourth National Football League championship since 1960, their fourth under Vince Lombardi. It is quite a football team. Hank Stram has never, well, he did while in Dallas, but while in Kansas City, never won the American Football League Championship. But did this year, with the additions of Mike Garrett, the rookie, a running halfback, and the development of Otis Taylor, the fine flanker back, who today showed that he is quite a flanker, no matter what league you're talking about. Stram came up with some speed, and the Kansas City Chiefs came up with the championship by knocking off Buffalo. They got the chance to come against Green Bay, and they held in there for the first half only. Because after the first half, the interception by Willie Wood just seemed to turn the tide. And the Green Bay Packers, veterans of such championship play as this, took it and ran. Pitt scoring immediately, and from there on, throughout the second half, there was no question. The play, the offense, the impetus all belonged to the Green Bay Packers. Well... George Reiterman and Pat Summerall by this time should be in the Green Bay Packers dressing room, and in a moment will be going down to the dressing room for their report. Now, of course, whether or not they will be allowed in the dressing room right away, we don't know. So we'll just hang on right here as the band continues to play. The crowd this afternoon, 63,036, turned out at the Los Angeles Coliseum to watch. Under perfect 
and sunny skies. Temperature in the 70s. Little or no wind. A delightful day for a football game. And, of course, a great day that many people will remember for a long time as the inaugural of the Super Bowl, the first meeting between the American Football League and the National Football League, which took place here today, January the 15th of 1967. Well, football, with the exception of the Pro Bowl, which will be played here between NFL All-Stars, and the American Football League All-Star Game, which is coming up next Saturday afternoon, football is just about over. We turn our attention now to other things coming up on NBC Radio, and we remind you of monitor on NBC, which is on every weekend, but we also remind you of a specific NBC radio pickup, which will be the Bob Hope Desert Classic, coming up on February 4th and 5th. This giant coliseum is about emptied out now of its 63,000 plus fans, but one of the bands, one of the many bands that was here for the Super Bowl, continues to play at midfield. Now, let us go down to the dressing room to Pat Summerall. So uh, we should have perhaps as many as 12 or 15 interleague games next summer. What are the differences now remain for you to work out? Uh, for example, we have one or two rule differences uh, this afternoon's game. Uh, have those things been resolved or are they still to be resolved? Well, one of the main ones left open is still that two-point conversion. It was not used today, but it will be used in all of the interleague preseason games next summer to give the NFL clubs a chance to uh, see how it works. Mm -hmm. And as to the future of the two-point conversion, uh, we'll take it up after the summer, perhaps. What about uh, the financial payoff now? About fifteen thousand dollars to the winner, and about eighty-five hundred uh, or thereabouts to the loser, or seventy-five hundred just for right. uh, Is that predetermined, or what effect the size of the crowd is? Yes, those were those were set figures, and then uh, uh, after taking those and game expenses out, that's about a million one hundred and seventy thousand for the competing players. Then we'll take game expenses out, and then after that, forty percent of the remainder would go to their player pension funds. And then 15% to each league office and 15% to each of the competing clubs. So that's, uh, it's from a financial standpoint, uh, it was quite successful. Win or lose, it's a pretty good afternoon. Yes, it was. For both teams and for you as uh, commissioner of the, of the two leagues. What is your title now? Well, I'm commissioner of the two leagues, and uh, hopefully NFL will pick an NFL president soon so I can take off another hat. Steve, thank you very, very thank much. Thank you, Pat. Congratulations to you on a wonderful show this afternoon. We'll have more from both the dressing rooms in just a moment. Well, you heard Pat Summerall talking with the commissioner of the National Football League as well as the American Football League, Pete Roselle. And something that perhaps we did not mention in the closing moments he mentioned, and I'm sure that the families of the Green Bay Packers know it, each of the winning players gets $15,000. The losing players get $7,500. Well, the Coliseum is about empty, but as we said, this game will be talked about for a long, long time. It has been won by the Green Bay Packers. For this NBC radio coverage of the AFL-NFL Championship, the Super Bowl, our producer was Len Dillon. Our engineer, John Pollock. The Super Bowl, the 1967 AFL-NFL Championship game, has been brought to you by Plymouth Division of Chrysler Motors Corporation. See your Plymouth dealer during his first annual Win You Over sale by Sports Illustrated for the best in sports every week, and by Eastman Dillon, Union Securities and Company, members of the New York Stock Exchange. From the Coliseum in Los Angeles, this is Jim Simpson, along with George Rademan, saying so long and reminding you again of the final score. The Green Bay Packers, 35. The Kansas City Chiefs, 10. This has been a sports presentation of NBC News.